Do you think? Do you think that Warwick Davis has a connection with Adam Driver and could get him in a Leprechaun movie? Is that how you want to start Davis? with this podcast? <laughs> well, I mean, it's obviously how we've started. So. Okay. <laughs> do I mean Warwick Davis has most likely met Adam Driver? That's cool because Warwick Maybe. Davis. <laughs> Well, well yeah. he had a cameo in episode nine, so I wouldn't be surprised if I, Adam Driver seems real. He keeps his arms length. I mean, from he, the keeps his, he, well, he keeps his arm length from like <laughs> talking about it in public, yeah. but like he seems like he likes most of the people from yeah. it, uh, and he seems like a pretty personal guy if you actually meet him. Like uh, at all the award shows, he's been, he like went up to Bong Joon Ho. He's like, I really wanted to meet you, and I'm like, Aww. me too. Oh, they need to That's work. So they cute. need to work. Adam Driver, Song Kang Ho. Oh man, That's they could be much. lifeguards. That movie would be like too much. It'd have to be destroyed. My dream cast would be like Mark Duplass, Adam Driver, Aww. Song Kang Ho. Genius. Anyway, welcome to the podcast, everybody. It's me and Thomas and our friend... Hannah. Hannah! Woo! 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 <laughs> Hannah has a broken foot. Yeah. And where do you go? Do you, you study film. I do. Where? Chapman University. Chapman University, the the leading the leading school for all film students in the hey, world. it's in the top ten. It's in the top ten! Woo! Woo! And are you... Is this... How long have you been there now? Two years. Two years? Oh, wow. Wow, time fucking flies. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <sighs> and Hannah is going to be directing a movie eventually starring me about... Yeah. Uh, what? What's it going to be about? I don't think we're to that part. Of the no, I know. <laughs> that this isn't about it. But if you were to direct me in a movie, what would it be about? I have no idea. Luckily. Yes, I like it. <laughs> we just film. It, yeah, we just, just film and it just, it, just captures, it just happens. Yeah, it just happens. It captures the essence of my life and humanity. Mm-hmm. It'd, it'll be, be, it'd be the sequel to Tall Girl, Tall Boy. Oh, Whoa. Fuck, <laughs> Tall Boy. I haven't seen I'm tall six boy. foot eight, <laughs> but I only wear size 11 shoes. What the <laughs> fuck? In men's. <laughs> Shit. Anyway, today we'll be talking about Blackjack and Killer Joe. An adjective and a first name for both films. Is that intentional? No. No. I thought about it yesterday. I'm like, that's funny. This isn't the weirdest coincidence we've had on the show one yeah, what time. Was, what was that? We, Stoker and uh, A Shadow of a Doubt. Oh, yeah. Have you seen any, either of those films? Stoker's by Park chan Wook, like the director of like Old Boy. Okay. Um, okay. And Shadow of a Doubt is Alfred Hitchcock. Alfred okay. Hitchcock. And Stoker's pretty much like a remake of <laughs> Shadow of a Doubt. But we nice had thing. no yeah, idea. That's really funny. <laughs> I was just like, I want to see this Park chan Wook film. And I've heard it's good. That's really and then funny. I watched it. And I'm like, this is really similar. And then I was looking up stuff because we always looked up a little like like Uncle Charlie's. Yeah. And And the director of Stoker's like, yeah, we wrote it kind of as like a remake of Shadow of a Doubt. I'm like, what the fuck? So you stole it. You leave. Kind of. It's it's a different movie. It's just. I think I liked it more. I did not. Mm. I think I gave Shadow of a Doubt a six and that a seven. And I think you were the opposite. Yeah. I pr- I think I'd probably give Stoker a little lower now. I just yeah. remember. Fuck Stoker. Meh. Yeah, fuck that movie. Yeah. Lady from Alice in Wonderland. She's oh, the main character. Mia, Mia Wagabagoo. With the long, yeah. Wa- wa- Mike Wazowski. Yeah, I always think Wazowski. Yeah. <laughs> That's basically what it is. She's like, she's a decent actress and she's just in a lot of shit. Yeah. yeah. I liked Stoker, but like, have you ever seen Tracks? Is that the one with uh, Adam, Adam Driver, Driver yeah. and, and the camel? Yeah. No, I haven't. That movie fucking sucks. I, I did see on your letterbox. I was like, do, what do, the don't you have all your Adam Driver movies yeah, rated? And I so that was last. So. I believe that's. Like, that might be higher than Rise of Skywalker. Oh, uh, well, I haven't. <laughs> I gave I both haven't, of them I a haven't three checked out of the 10, updated. So. <laughs> The updated list. So. I can't remember you gave which Rice one. Three out of ten. Yeah, the first time I saw it a four, and then right after I gave it a three. Mm. If I see it again, I might give it a two. <laughs> it just keeps going down. Yeah. <sighs> so you haven't been on the podcast before, no. and we haven't talked like we haven't hung out in quite a while. No. 
have you seen any epic films recently in like the last couple months even like what's top five films of the last couple months um well this is a big old memory check for me so it might take you a bit to think okay you do that i saw i saw honey boy honey boy saw honey boy actually with the q a with shia labeouf afterwards and did you meet him no but you go, I love do you, know, you. Do you know who Scott Mance is? He like works for Hollywood, uh, Hollywood Reporter and he like does all like a bunch of interviews and stuff. But we met him. He's super cool. Max has met him like a bunch of times. Anyways, um, just because he always does like, fun thing that I didn't really know about LA is that those things happen all the time. Almost any single movie that comes out, there's going to be a Q&A with like, Incredible people who are there. So we moving to LA. Let's go. <laughs> um, Max's brother just went to Q and A of Parasite with Bong Joon Ho and Song Kang Ho. So like oh, two days ago or something. So it's yeah, my fucking dream. Yeah, so it's, my dream. it's like Bong Joon Ho put me in the movie. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I saw Honey Boy uh, whenever it came out in theaters a bit ago with the Q and A afterwards with the director Alma Harrell and then Shia LaBeouf, Noah Shoup, and then someone else who was in the movie. Yeah. And I loved Honey Boy. I think it's been really um, shorted in all of the like award shows. It looks it looks great. I think it just came out on Prime. Oh, did it? Yeah. I think uh, it did, yeah. It wasn't supposed to come no, out No, it yet. came out a and day or it, it came like, out on accident. Somebody's like, oh, like, guys, they were you like, why is play Honey, it. They were like, why is Honey Boy streaming already? And then like, it's like it said like coming yeah. soon, but right below it's like, watch now. Yeah, like, they, they said that they accidentally started streaming it for 24 hours <laughs> on accident. But it was, um, I loved it. And Shia LaBeouf was like phenomenal in it. Noah Jupe, who plays the younger version of him, was really, really great. And then Lucas Hedges, who plays the older version of him, awesome, like really, really awesome. And Thomas they, loves Lucas Hedges. Uh, I, they've got nothing personal. He loves. Him. I I think Lucas Hedges is great. Me too. Thomas loves him though. Yeah. He's in are you love. are you more of a Lucas Hedges or a Timothy Shaw? Okay, person? well that's not <laughs> Timothy oh, <laughs> Shaw. Are you trying to compare <laughs> Lucas Hedges? To- They're both like a twenty-four. I just I just people. watched Call Me by Your Name again, like yesterday. I saw that. So, so good. What a great movie. It's so good. Timothy Shaw. I saw so so it. I'm so fucking excited for Dune. Yeah. Dune. <laughs> Dune's gonna be lit as fuck. I need to watch. I'm gonna rewatch the David Lynch one, and I want to watch Alejandro. Do you like the, it? I mean, I remember liking it as a kid. Uh, I the last time I watched, I it, also I started like watching it. Twin Peaks. So. Still haven't seen it. I've been I'm watching. On I, we season watched two uh, episode like two or three or something. Mm. Hannah doesn't watch our podcast. Well, I can't watch podcast. I have to listen to it. I mean, there is a video on really? YouTube. Yeah, it's a vision. you're not being. It's just, it's just an animation. <laughs> you're so not scared. secretly <laughs> being filmed. <laughs> <laughs> People will just see me like fidgeting for two hours. <laughs> it's just you in the video. <laughs> so scary. <laughs> Surprise! No, we have a camera that just shoots the back of your head. <laughs> just follows me anywhere I look. Really eerie, and then you never see my face. But anyways, um, I don't know. What else have I seen? Did you did you see Peanut Butter Falcon? I didn't. I oh. missed that one. I thought that one was really good. Yeah, uh, everyone. Speaking of Shia LaBeouf people, being good. People did really enjoy that one. It made a shit ton of money for how few theaters and stuff have played that. And there was just an, uh, have you guys ever seen the Actors Roundtable mm-hmm. thing on YouTube? There was with one with Shia LaBeouf. Shia LaBeouf. That one, it was uh, great. Adam Sandler, Adam Driver, Robert De Niro, yeah. Jamie Foxx. Mm-hmm. I think that was it. I right? think there were six. Um... Oh, Tom Hanks. Oh, yeah, yeah, Tom Hanks and Adam Driver were just sitting next to each other. <laughs> and it, what was really weird was seeing Robert De Niro and Adam Sandler just sitting next to each other. Was, yeah. <laughs> Adam, Adam Sandler was like, I don't know if I should be at this table. And Shia LaBeouf's just like, bullshit. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, good. I, Adam Sandler was actually like super vocal in that round table about yeah. like, a lot of things. It was cool. Oh, I watched Funny People for the first time. I've heard I that was liking that. Yeah, one. I've, I've was, seen like half of it, and I thought it was. It was, decent. yeah. The is it, that Jim Apatow? It is. Yeah. yeah, he wrote and directed it, I believe. But it's uh, more of like it's a more dramatic movie than most. It movies, is. Right? It was honest. I really liked a lot of it, and then I remember like the third act. Third act is little. super 
distant from like the first two, so it gets kind of like it's, weird. it's the Full Metal Jacket of Judd <laughs> Apatow films. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> um, but and then Leslie Mann is in like the third act, and and then he his kid their kids are also in it, so I oh. think it became I think he, you know, did a lot with that. It was just I don't know. It was the end was only like okay, but I did watch that. Um, Have you seen What Did Jack Do Yet? No. It's the new David Lynch short film oh, where he interrogates yeah. a monkey. I have not watched that. It's incredible. I, did, I heard about it. It's incredible. Really? Yeah. Max really liked it. I know that. I know. I saw his review as soon as it was posted. Really? Yeah, of course. I didn't see it, but I haven't watched Uncut Gems yet. Um, mm, great movie. I really enjoyed I it. I have the screener, so I should, but I'm really lazy and I haven't, so. You should go to the theater and watch it. Well, I can't drive, so. <laughs> Just walk. <laughs> And I don't think Midway is playing it, so which Probably is the closest not. to me. Yeah. Um, but yes, I haven't seen that yet. That's the biggest one that I still want to see that I haven't. Um, Knives Out obviously was great. Yeah. I saw that at the Cinerama Dome, which was really cool. Ryan Johnson does it again. He did do. He's that. already on board for the sequel. Uh, Daniel Craig's really? already, yeah, Daniel Craig's already like, yeah, I would do, <laughs> there was an interview where he's like, I would do anything for Ryan Johnson. I would Aww. definitely be in. <laughs> and I love that, like, everyone in Hollywood's like, I love Ryan Johnson. That's crazy. Because he's such a nice man. They're really but everyone out sequel? here is just like, fuck Every, Ryan Johnson. Well, that's, I mean, that's only, like, people that didn't like The Last Jedi. <laughs> yeah, and then Losers. everyone else doesn't know who he is. So. Yeah. yeah. Or, like, they'll see Knives Out, they'll be like, that's really good. Yeah. Who did that? Yeah. Michael Bay? Then they'll oh, be like, no, no, it's the guy who made Looper. And they go, oh. Mm, Looper's good. Yeah, it was all right. I like Looper a lot. I like every Ryan Johnson film a lot. I think Looper might have been the only other one I had seen. Seen I, Brick? I, I haven't seen Brick. Brick's great. I haven't great. seen Brick yet either. Um, have you seen Brick, I think Brothers Blue? Right now. No, I haven't. I really like that one as well. It reminds me a lot in its tone of uh, Knives Out. Hmm. That was great. I just watched another Ryan Johnson film this morning at like 4 a.m. And it made me burst into tears, like 10 seconds. Ah. Um, are you familiar with the Mountain Goats? Oh, yeah. No, I know who they are. They're a band. Um, are, are, they, are they Seattle based? I don't know where John Darnielle is right now, but no. Mm. John Darnielle's the main guy in it. He does have a backing band um, with John Worcester and. Oh, I can't remember the other person in it. But um, he, it started off with just him recording into a boombox. But uh, he's he's been my favorite artist for like eight years now. Mm-hmm. Um, he's also like a deeply religious man. And he made an album called uh, The Life of the World to Come, where all the songs are named after Bible verses. And uh, when, I first read, when I first listened to the album, that was like the closest thing I've ever gotten to like a spiritual like a religious experience it's amazing it's a great great album um but Ryan Johnson did a did a pretty much a film of it where it's just like he walks into like they walk into uh where he first learned the piano and like when he was like eight and he just does the whole album in like one take right there Oh, that's cool. And he's, like, running back and forth from the piano, and then a couple songs he does on the guitar, and they change, like, the way they're filming each angle, like, for every song. It's really great. It's it's amazing. <laughs> it's, it's really, really good. And I realized that uh, Ryan Johnson also directed my favorite music video from the Mountain Goats, which is called Woke Up New from the album Get Lonely. Hmm. It's great. You should watch it. It's great. Okay. Yeah, but that was... I also rewatched the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Oh. Perfection. Great. I love that. When? It was like four days ago. I watched all the extended editions. Oh, nice. Because so, I love long movies. There's a theater like 20 minutes away from me that like once every couple months plays all the Lord of the Rings movies like back to back to back. Oh, that would be a mission. And yeah, I know a lot of people have gone and it sounds real long, but fun. I also rewatched Aragon with Pierre. Oh no! Oh boy! Pierre gave it a nine out of ten. Of course he did. And then he gave all the Lord of the Rings movies less than that. Oh, 
Oh, no. I think it was mostly to fuck with me. I hope so. Pierre's one of my best friends. Uh, he uh, hates David Lynch. Um, he hates is monkeys. He... Uh, Wait, is... He's just uh, is he one from... of my... He's from Hawaii. Yeah, he lives He lives there still. Mm. And he's, uh, he's a funny, funny man. Him and Eaton have a bit of a rivalry. That's uh, Eaton. That's his nickname. Pierre gave him. Yeah. Thomas's? Yeah, wow. Pierre couldn't remember his name and kept going, is his name e That's not a real name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, he gave you a so nickname. So that's just his name yeah. now. Oh, yeah. It's what I partially go We're going to get shirts made that say E10 rocks. Except I spell E10 differently than they do. They, they go like E and then the number 10 and I go E-T-E-N. Well, we st- originally terrible. it was E T E N. Oh, and now as we soon just as I E-10. switch to it, you guys switch the new yeah, miracle. exactly. Because I can't ever be on the same page with it. Exactly. As soon as you change it, Pierre might just change your name again to P ten. P ten. Peter Griffin. That sounds so high school. Like people change your names to sound. <laughs> hey, do you want to join the Penn Island Club? Then you write Penn Island, and it says Penis Land. Yeah, we're I just always write pen fifteen. Yeah, go pen fifteen. Spell I cup. <laughs> spell I cup. Spell spell I cup. E Y C P. Kind of sounds even scary. Yeah, I see you. Um, I mean, I watched other things, but those were the main things. I think. Main big ones. What about you, Thomas? Anything big? I've yeah. heard a letterbox. Yeah, I'm checking, my, check I'm checking my letterbox. Well, I watched a lot of things. But. I watched uh, Uncut Gems. I rewatched uh, The Evil Dead. I watched Little Women. I watched uh, that short film by the Safdie brothers and uh, Adam Sandler, Goldman vs. Silverman. I uh, watched Mulholland Drive again. I watched uh, What We Do in the Shadows, Call Me By Your Name, What Did Jack Do, and then I watched the entirety of Two Cut and Birdie. You did? Oh, yeah. I've, I've heard it's good. good. Yes. Yay! Oh, my God. Have you seen okay. that? I'll um, watch it soon. Have you seen uh, that Folding Ideas video about it? No, I haven't. It's good. It's like 10, or 10 minutes long, but hmm. it's good. I've, I've heard the show's great. Oh, I watched uh, the 1990 film Gamera. Uh, the 1995 Gamera film. Mm, I haven't seen it's any of the Gamera. the first of the trilogy. Yeah. And I've heard the trilogy is really good. I thought it was... Honestly, most kaiju films, I think, are, like, pretty good. But there hasn't been a lot that I've been like, this is great! Yeah, the thing I, I like about kaiju movies is my expectations aren't super high. So. <laughs> the thing I like about kaiju films is they're not very good, so I like them more <laughs> when they are good. Well, it's like, they just have certain criteria they have to meet, and then I'm like, all right, I'm satisfied. As long as I feel that. I just fucking hate most human arcs in kaiju films. Oh, I agree. Which is funny because my favorite kaiju film is like The Host, which is about the humans. Well, that's, that's one that made sure to have a very well written. Yeah, exactly. Most most kaiju films, it just feels like slapped on the human arcs. Yeah. And I'm like, this is not good. Do I this epic? That's what happens to my pants, too. Yeah, it's kind of epic looking. He's almost wearing shorts. I'm almost wearing, wearing, wearing a cool... My my knee is just completely exposed in these pants, for anyone wondering. It's very cool. And like... Pop, it's very breezy. Pop your thigh. Yeah, it's very sexy. <laughs> it's very beautiful. Um, do you watch John Mulaney and the Sacklin? Yes, I watched it twice. Uh so good. Yes, I'm a very big fan of that one. It might <laughs> so be my good. favorite John Mulaney thing. Yeah, it's so good. I was a very big fan. I was like, hee hee ho That's so strange. Have you watched it yet? Oh, yeah. So good. Thomas so only much, watches... So much fun. You only watch The peak cinema. of cinema. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I was too busy watching The uh, Evil Dead. There's a great Jake the Gyllenhaal performance in it. Sam Raimi one, right? Not the... Yeah, of course. Okay, I wasn't sure if you watched the remake again. No. <laughs> I know a bunch of people that really like that movie. I'm like, what's wrong with you? Yeah. I mean, it's fine, but yeah, it's I didn't fine. like it. Have you seen The Evil Dead? I haven't. None of them? Mm-hmm. Oh, man. <laughs> I mean, that's coming from a... That's a look coming from a guy who hasn't seen Army of Darkness, so he doesn't have two... I mean, 
I've seen two thirds of the trilogy. I almost watched Army of Darkness last night, but then I watched the Ryan Johnson movie. Mm. And I think that was a better deal because I was kind of in a depressive rut, and that helped me. I don't know if Army of Darkness would have been like the same thing. It probably would have helped you. You probably would have laughed here. I would have been like. <laughs> No. <laughs> Your neighbors are so scared right now. Oh god, it's a haunted Furby! Is that a so scary. That's just what me and Thomas do seemingly every podcast. There'll be a moment where we just go... <laughs> okay. I'm Your turn. so go. afraid. No. Come on. Jeez. <laughs> this is why you need to watch our podcast. Listen to this genius. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, any other movies you want to talk about? I saw a Portrait of a Lady on Fire. Oh my god. Uh, was by. it incredible? It was really great. I'm watching it soon. Yeah. yeah okay. It comes to theaters. Well, too. yeah, no, I got lucky again because they did a two week long. Um, Thing in LA and New York, mm-hmm. and then they said that they weren't going to release it like wider until like Valentine's Day. Yeah. So they just want to do that for award season. So purposes. you can have the perfect double feature with yeah. Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah. Oh yeah. Does that come out well? Yes. <laughs> oh good. Um, but yeah, they did that so it could basically be nominated uh, for the Oscars, and then it didn't get nominated, which is really <laughs> unfortunate. It didn't get nominated for best foreign film. Oh wow. Yeah, Completely female, female directors, directors got fucked. They really year. got fucked. Like, they always get fucked, but, like, but there were so many high-profile, like, pretty, female-directed yeah, films this year. Yeah, I agree. There's this and, like, Little Women was, like, the only one present. And, I mean, and Greta Gerwig didn't, didn't even get nominated. Even get for, yeah, it's yeah. just Little Women for, what, Best Picture? Or for Best, best Picture. Um, and maybe it's, Best it's Costumes also, as well or something? It, well, it's nominated for Best Adapted Screenplay. Gotcha. Um, but, I mean, even out of, like, things nominated for Screenplay, I don't think... Many other, like, female, either written or directed things are nominated. Um, I mean, referring to Letterboxd for what else that I saw that was, um, Won't You Be My Neighbor? How was it? Was actually, I kind of went in, like, not expecting a lot, just because I, I loved, because, I, I mean, I we saw really the dog together. around that time, so Yeah, I, I went to the Olympic Club. Um, mm. But, um, you know, because, like, I really liked the dog. Yeah. And so I was like, eh, it might just be like a rehash of that. But it wasn't at all. Um, it was pretty interesting. Obviously, Tom Hanks was great. And yeah, it was, they did a lot more like interesting stuff with it than I would have expected. So I honestly really enjoyed it. I didn't end up seeing it yet. I'll wait until it comes to, you know, DVD and stuff and mm-hmm. streaming. But the, the tone of the film kind of reminds me of um, End of the Tour. Yeah, I I haven't actually watched all of that, Mm. but it's it's like a similar kind of like premise because it's about a journalist. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I forgot. Have you seen that? That's the one with uh, Jason Segal and Jesse Eisenberg. And it's Mm -hmm. about um, Uh, the guy who wrote that David Foster Wallace Wallace, Wallace, Infinite Jest. Um, That's a great movie. Yeah, no, (laughs) it's kind of similar. It's obviously a little different because like Dave Foster Wallace's like presence is so much different than like kind of like. Than Mr. Rogers. A little yeah, bit, little bit sure. crazy. I don't know if Mr. Rogers was a little bit crazy. Eh, maybe. Yeah, but it was, I honestly. Mr. Joe, my it. roommate, saw it. And he yeah, I it. saw that. I saw that. Um, what, you follow him on Letterboxd? I do. Oh, ho, ho. you should follow Pierre. That just sounds scary. But, <laughs> it's, um, a, it's really funny. I, I he won't also, follow you, though, because he only follows he me. He fo- only follows me. The things I've seen this year, I mean, Honey Boy is directed by a woman. So good. Little Women, Portrait of a Lady on Fire. See so Hustlers? Good. I haven't. Did you? It was good. Yeah, yeah. I really enjoyed it. Um, I liked The Farewell. Farewell yeah. was good. Thomas had, me, had a it, person it me... snoring right next to him. Oh, no. That was really funny. It made me cry <laughs> It was really <a> distracting. <laughs> um, and then I recommended it to this girl um, who I know from school, and she had never heard of it, and I told her about it, and then she realized that like her family was doing the same thing to her uncle. <laughs> Oh, a lot of people do it. Yeah, because, like, I mean, she's, like, Chinese and, like, her family's from China. And 
I was telling her, she was like, I didn't realize other people did that. And I was like, oh, God. And then she watched it. So the it actual woman in, like, the, the farewells based off She's of, alive. Yeah, I, I want to say she still doesn't know. She's in the movie. She's in the movie. She's in the movie. I mean, <laughs> I mean, so the title sick. in China was like, don't tell her. <laughs> She, <laughs> she, I think she plays, um, the grandma's, like, sister or something like that. I mean, they could have just, they <laughs> could have just be been really like, hard. No, don't. <laughs> um, but then. Maybe I'm wrong. Probably. I'm oh, wrong wait, it's everything. called A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. Won't you be my neighbor is the doc. But anyways. Oh, yeah. Um, hmm. Booksmart. Booksmart's yes. great. Yeah. I love, I, I really enjoyed Booksmart. I, I just, like, I just rewatched it, like, I didn't, like, a love week it, ago. But. It's because you hate women. Exactly. We know. And then I saw the souvenir when I was at Sundance. How was that? It's it's good. It's really I've heard good. it's pretty epic. Oh, yeah. It's been on my Prime watch list for. Like yeah, I saw those on Prime, which is awesome. Yeah, um, Told Swin is it? You know what else is on Prime Video? Project ISIS X. Wow. I, I wanted to watch something on Prime that like only like three people on Letterboxd have watched, so I watched that with Pierre. Propaganda. <laughs> Don't watch it. So scary. Um, it's it's like <laughs> they fucking execute people in. The, it's like a drama. It's like a forty five minute drama. They like fucking like they disarm people and then they execute them after they get their information. They're like, we couldn't just turn them over to the police, so it was good that we <laughs> executed them. And I'm just like, what the? F-? Remember when we saw the greatest propaganda film for Sergeant children? Sergeant Stubby. <laughs> um, I'm. Deeply wipe that from your memory. Oh man! Remember me going in, and be like, "This is gonna be really bad, but funny." And then this by like a, halfway through, I'm like, "This is such a good time." I was so fucking pissed. <laughs> yeah, no, I've no. watched a lot of pro. Have you seen Unplanned? It's a uh, anti-abortion movie by uh, I believe it's by Pure Flex. Um, it's terrible, but at least it's like funny and how bad it is. <laughs> like, they make everybody like, yes, I want to kill baby. <laughs> so I'm just like, what the fuck? I'm like, I want to be in an anti-abortion movie just so I can be like, yes, I want to kill baby. <laughs> Sergeant Stubby just was resilient. <laughs> yeah. He got hit by so many bombs and never bled. That's... Remember how that person died and the, <laughs> his body just wasn't yeah. there? Like, there was just no body. It, it, was, just it was just his like, hat or it whatever. Like a, it was just, like, sunshine. <laughs> I'm like, did he get fucking Thanos snapped? Yeah. What the fuck? Literally. He just... I just I just remember the trenches. And I remember <laughs> the <laughs> shitty CGI dog. And that's it. That's, like, all I remember. I remember, at, like, ve- at the very beginning, he's, like, running through the street. And it's just completely empty. There's like one car in the far off <laughs> distance. And I'm like, what is happening? Logan Lerman is in it. He, voices he plays the yeah. dog. And then doesn't, doesn't, um. Isn't like Helen, Helen about, about, yeah, like, yeah, 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 she's the narrator. It's like, how did you, did you guys fall for some sort of like yeah. scheme? I like, mean, she's, you, she, I mean, that's a pretty good paycheck. She's like in it for like seven minutes <laughs> narrating it. Yeah, but. She yeah. probably just did it over Skype. Probably. <laughs> like, that's what uh, <laughs> Hugo Weaving, he played Megatron in, like, the Michael Bay Transformers movies, and he voiced him over Skype. Oh, <laughs> He's wow. like, I don't have time. And Michael Bay's like, no, we need you. And he's like, okay, I'm getting on Skype. No. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's bad. <laughs> Those movies are epic. Transformers hmm. movies? Yeah. I don't like them. I liked Bumblebee. I didn't watch that, but a lot of people liked it. By Travis Knight, the guy who did yeah. Kubo. Did you watch um, um, Missing Link? I no, not yet. I, I like Leica. It's on, um, I, yeah, like it's great. It's on um, something right now, streaming. Let's check Letterboxd! I think, I may made that up. Uh, don't quote me. <laughs> the, not that the globes really matter that much. I mean, they do matter. It's on Hulu! They do matter. They do matter. Nothing matters. Hollywood Foreign Press, you matter. Um, (laughs) (laughs) um, But they're not like... I feel like a lot of people who win them don't really care that much. But Missing Link won, which was super cool. Hmm. They said, fuck Disney. But not fuck Disney, because I like Disney. 
But I'll say it. Fuck. <laughs> fuck Disney. Um, Except when they give me more Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> Star Wars The Clone Wars Season 7 comes out in a month. I, yeah, I saw that. You know what was just the, the best Disney, yeah, though? Yeah, the new trailer looks fucking lit. You know what the best it. Disney was? High School Musical, the musical series. Holy fuck. It was so good. Yeah, are you Did caught you up with it? Encore? What? No. <laughs> it was so fucking... good. Like, I, do, I don't like high school okay, musicals. Okay, neither. Max never even seen any high school musical, and then I made him start watching it. I made, like, everyone that I has ever been in my, Max. Yeah, in my room at school, like, watch it, and then everyone became obsessed with it. Several people cried through the season. I cried. I'm so excited for season two. Uh, Ricky! Oh, I love Ricky. Ricky. I love Ricky. Um, the girl who plays... um, um. What's her name? The one who plays Miss Darbus, who's the teacher. Uh, Ashlyn. Ashlyn. She went to Max High School. Does Max know her? Kinda. And then, and then... Now he can be in season two! And then, um, what's his name? Um, uh, in the show, the choreographer, you know? Yeah. Why do I not remember his name? I know his name is in real life, it's Frankie. Carlos. Carlos, and his real name is Frankie, but he... My friend in my major knows him because they sang in the Harry Potter Frog Choir together at Universal Studios. They both worked there and sang in the frog choir that sings throughout the Harry Potter Park. And then I kept posting about High School Musical, the musical, the series. And then he was like, oh, I know him. And I was like, now I want to be his best friend. too. So, yeah, it's, it's a great show. You should watch it. I don't. I don't know. It's so good. Honestly, like, isn't it so the three good? things that like those three things that launched with Disney Plus, Encore, High School Musical, the musical, the series, and the Mandalorian were like all phenomenal. Encore's there are like two episodes I didn't really like, but it's like really I think you would really like it, especially because you've been in musical theater before. Yeah, let's not let's remember where you came from. Yeah, there. remember your roots there. Yeah, wow. fucking bitch. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I mean, that's like saying like, hey, guy, you work this boring desk job, so you have to like this boring. Okay. You need to watch but, Office but Space. You, being, I do like being Office in Space. theater slash musicals was a, a choice and yeah. an extracurricular. And then I left. You did under unfortunate circumstances. Yes. <laughs> but we're gonna join theater again. We're going to make... Or, oh, yeah. Anybody that's watching uh, by now, um, or hopefully by now, the short film DDoSer that we made, it should be live on our channel. Go watch it. It should be, like, front and center. It's stupid as fuck, but I'm very proud of it, so go watch it. Thomas did the cinematography and co-wrote it. Yeah. <laughs> the very slim writing we did. It's, like... I don't remember how long it is. It's probably like 15 minutes. Go watch it. Love it. Live it. It will change your life. Yeah. And what I hope you're excited for the DDoS or cinematic universe. I have like seven more movies planned for it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Are you excited? I'm so excited. Where can I watch? It'll be right on our YouTube channel. Two weens and a screen. Perfect. I'm a ween. He's a ween. And we watch a screen. I get it now. You can be the third ween for the same oh, week. Oh, yay. <laughs> Sometimes third ween. <laughs> yeah. Can't wait. You're the third person, the third guest we've ever had on the podcast. Who else? We've had Joe and we've had Lucera. Mm -hmm. So I hope you're honored by that. I am honored. I really yeah. am. We have a whole 61 subscribers. Yeah. We're getting That's there. That's pretty good. We're almost 100. Almost on 100. On YouTube? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's pretty good. That's more than like the average like. And as soon as YouTube you get back to Chapman, you're yeah. gonna go. You're gonna hand out cards. Mm -hmm. and just have the YouTube URL. You gonna tell people to tell their grandmas? Tell yeah, that's our thing. We always tell people to tell their grandmas because we love grandmas, even though I don't. Yeah, too. at all. I love Do my grandma, yeah. but I love average, your grandma. Too. The average grandma kind of sucks. <laughs> Everybody, do your grandma out there a favor. A, let her know she's dying, and B, <laughs> put her out of her misery. <laughs> put her out of her misery by giving her a good podcast to laugh at with screen wings. Let her enjoy her last little bit. <laughs> Hearing Thomas's seductive, sultry voice. Oh yeah, seductive and sultry. All right. 
Alright, are we ready for questions? Are we ready for questions? Are you ready for questions? I can't wait. Okay. Who are we starting with? Pierre? Of course. Okay, so Pierre always asks a question. Every single week. Except for, I think, once. Whoa. It's locker. I'm laying in bed thinking about how I hate having a non-cat roommate, so I'm sending this to you. I think you're recording soon, so here's my question. What? Is it cat related? No. He, he, say, just, he just hates having a roommate. He just likes having a, his, a cat. His cat's like really weird and makes sounds like <laughs> instead of like meowing. Oh. Cats. And it's very dumb. In no, superhero cats, media. Cats aren't dumb. Okay. His cat is very dumb. <laughs> I don't like that sentiment. I think all cats are great. His cat's very dumb. His cat's amazing. Okay. Okay, dumb. okay, okay. I can allow that. I can allow that. In superhero media, is a hero to blame, even partially, for the damage done by criminals who just end up breaking free and causing problems again? For example, has Batman been responsible for thousands of deaths because he refuses to kill or permanently incapacitate the Joker? Isn't that like an arc in like hasn't that been like multiple arcs? Yeah, it's a big thing. Thoughts in a lot of superhero media. Um, I mean, yeah, partly, probably. I mean, I would, I would tend to agree, but at the same time, isn't the city of Gotham just as much to blame for just not only letting him escape, like, come on, up the fucking security. Yeah. (laughs) And also, like, all the guards, they could just fucking bring a gun and shoot him. Why is it Batman's responsibility? True. Yeah. Probably not the hero's responsibility. There's like the argument that like the heroes create more villains, maybe, but like yeah, yeah, that's that's the big thing. Like the Dark Knight Rises, yeah, it's like because you have heroes, more villains will happen. I'm just like that's silly. Uh, I I think the logic's there. I feel like that would be a realistic occurrence of heroes. Yeah, that's why DDoSer, Dark Web Master. Yeah, exactly. Um, but, I don't know, it's like blaming the heroes, I don't know, it's like, it's like saying, like, firemen are, like, the reason why we have so many fires, it's like, <laughs> yeah, I maybe, agree. maybe some arsonists out there do, like, I love making their job harder. harder, but odds are they're probably just trying their best to help out. Yeah. All right. All right. Do you guys think it is weird to order a full pizza for just one person? Is this one still Pierre? Yeah. Um. Specifically, we were watching a movie. It might have been Killer Joe. Mm. It was Killer Joe. Somebody orders a pizza just for himself. And Pierre, like, freaked out. He's like, why is that guy ordering a pizza? And then he sends it back because there's olives on it. Yeah, because there's olives on it. Okay. But I'm like, I order Black olives on pizza. Really good. Yeah, I agree. Second, I mean, no, because pizza's great leftovers. I mean, yeah. Also, yeah. I can eat, I guess I'm six foot eight and I'm very big, so I can eat a whole pizza in one sitting. But even then, it's, like, it's more cost effective to order a whole well, pizza and take leftovers. And that's the whole, the I whole, hate the whole thing. Slice. The whole thing, the pizza trend now is the build your own like pizza, like, mm-hmm. like a whole pizza. So it's like, yeah. it's the new thing. It's not new at all. Like, but since I've been an adult, I don't know. I think I've ordered, like, a slice of pizza. I usually just buy a whole pizza. It's more cost effective. Well, there's not very many places you can just order a slice anyways. That's true. You usually have to order But even if I go to, like, Costco or something, yeah, I'm just like, I'm buying a whole pizza. Order a slice, but, yeah, may as well go, go all in. Like, I think I was at a fair once where I ordered a slice because that's, like, all they had. They weren't like yeah, they weren't gonna give pizza. you a full pizza. Hey, give me a pizza! I'm gonna carry it around. <laughs> Baby Thomas, do you order a whole pizza? Yeah. Yeah. So okay. Pierre's a weirdo. We already knew this, but I mean, it was a little, a little more strange in the movie when he's like sitting there alone at the restaurant. I mean, that's what I do. Yeah, and then he gets really. I'm angry also about weird. It. Yeah, he's like, you fucking old bitch. You put black olives <laughs> on your fucking pizza. Uh, and then Pierre almost but always pro- asks... But it may have been intentional. Like, for example, at the movie theater, if someone ordered an icy... This is when Jana worked there and she was really worried about always getting caught. 
mm. for doing things. She, she would hear someone say the icy flavor and then go get the wrong one on purpose. Uh-huh. And then so she could bring it out and then be like, oh, sorry, got you the wrong flavor and then go drink it. So, because the lady in the movie eats the pizza. So I think that's what she was doing. <laughs> Maybe. Um, and then Pierre always asks a movie about, da- uh, a question about David Lynch okay. because he's obsessed with them, okay. even though he hates them. Do you think David Lynch smells bad? <laughs> He probably smells rancid like a sack of wet three-month-old tuna sandwiches. He probably smells like cigarettes and coffee. I would I would agree closer to that, he, which I well, guess he's could from be from Montana, so he might smell like grass or tuna sandwiches. Uh, Do they love tuna, tuna sandwiches, sandwiches in Montana? Smell, it probably smells like a farm. It probably smells like monkey. I didn't know. He probably but smells like hair. Gel. Kyle McLaughlin from Twin Peaks is from Yakima. <laughs> yeah. I did not know that, and then I was yeah, really freaked out. I, to I find think that. he's. I don't know if he lives in this area, but I know he's over here quite a bit. Yeah, he, he lives. Just, he's next door. No, he lives he, in the park because I think he was following me because he was in Disneyland, and then he was immediately after that at like Mount Rainier, mm. and I was like, "Oh my god, Kyle McLaughlin's not following me, obviously." But it yeah. felt that way, and then I was like, "Why the fuck is he here?" And then I looked up, and he's from Yakima, and that really freaked me out. Yeah. Because Yakima is... Oh, he's such a pure baby. He lives he, in... He's on Portland, L.A. I know! And New York. He's the, yeah, no, I know. Because I when I started watching like Twin Peaks, I was like, how do I know you? And mm. then he's the mayor in Portlandia, and he's great in it. You know, I haven't watched Portlandia, but I see... Oh, I've yeah. seen, like, probably 15 episodes. He I was missing in one. Oh. Yeah, and then um, there he... When he was at Mount Rainier, he posted a photo on Instagram of him, like, holding a bird. And then he just captioned it, put a bird on it, because that's also a segment in Portlandia that they put mm. a bird on everything. Mm. But yeah, he's great in Portlandia. He's such a pure, he pure is. soul. I love him. We love him. And he has, um... He probably smells good. He probably does he probably smell good, does. but he has, um, a brand of wine. Oh, yeah. Everybody has a I brand know. of wine. <laughs> Thomas is gonna make a brand of wine. Probably not. Thomas's feet. That's what it's going to be called. <laughs> oh. Thomas. That was not as he funny. It, it, but it made me laugh. <laughs> oh, Thomas's feet! Comedian of the Year, London Hetty. Um, so to answer the question, I don't think David Lynch smells no, bad. He probably, well, if he does smell like cigarettes, smells, I guess that smells... He probably smells like a meadow. A meadow that someone's been smoking in, maybe. He has a brand of coffee. Yeah, he does. I've had some of it. Really? Is it good? Yeah. I don't it's like black. coffee, but I might drink David Lynch coffee. Oh. Um, Does he, like, stir it himself? Does he make it himself? No. He <laughs> it's from his orchard. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was all right. I, I, did, I don't really drink a lot of coffee, so I'm not super into it, but I tried it. It was all right. Okay. Questions from Julia. Okay. Our other top fan. Yes. Do you like roller coasters? Have you been to any amusement parks? And if yes, what is your favorite? Disneyland. Yeah. Says. I, I Just went to, very quietly. I went to Disneyland on average, like more than once a week per semester. What the fuck? Because it's like 15 minutes away from me. How fucking expensive was that? I have a pass. Mm. The fuck? What about you, Thomas? You like amusement parks? Not really. I really, really liked roller coasters as a kid, but um, I don't fit on them anymore. Like, uh, the last time I was on a roller coaster was the Washington State Fair mm. in, what, Puyallup? Yeah. And uh, I felt like I was going to die on the roller coaster because every time I passed a beam, it was, like, this close to my head. And I'm like, this feels so unsafe. Like, I feel like I'm going to break my neck and die. Yeah. <laughs> and it kind of, like, freaked me out. So I'm like, I guess I'm not going on roller coasters anymore. <laughs> Also, I just don't, like, my knees are digging into the seat, and, like, the thing is too big for my shoulders, so I just, it hurts to just sit in a roller coaster before it even goes. So I no longer like roller coasters. Amusement parks are kind of fun. I, I like standing in line and it's, talking to people. It's kind I, of fun. Yeah, I, I, only with I'm, like, I wouldn't go to an amusement park by myself, but if I'm with somebody, I just like talking to people. Mm-hmm. in different areas so I'm like cool now we're forced to talk to each other we should go to an amusement park so you finally talk to me Thomas nah <laughs> nah doesn't, doesn't want to talk to me Disneyland. 
I, I went to Disneyland Star, when I was the, seven. Star Wars. Galaxy's Edge. Galaxy's Edge. Mm-hmm. It's pretty. It's Ray pretty, looks really good. The Ray there is oh, really good. She's beautiful. Beautiful. And, um, and Kylo Ren will come out. It's really crazy. <laughs> Sorry, it's really if it's intense. not Ben Solo, I don't care. <laughs> okay, but Galaxy's Edge is pretty cool. The new ride just opened on Friday. I You're gonna go as soon as you. Get back and um, you get your foot thing yeah, off. Yeah, probably. I don't know if I'll be able to go on the new ride yet because it's really busy mm-hmm. and that's a lot of a lot of effort that I can wait for. But yeah, big Disneyland fan. I go all the time. Uh okay, well here's the most important question I think we've ever gotten. Best sandwich. I'm uh I'm partial to the club. Um I'm a vegetarian, so the veggie sandwich. I'm going to go with a nice peanut butter and jelly with sliced up bananas mm. on white bread. Peanut butter and jelly with sliced up bananas? Yeah. Not just peanut butter. Peanut butter and jelly mm. with sliced up bananas. I used to make it all the time. That's pretty good. I'm a fan. That sounds yummy. Um, I like peanut butter sandwiches as well, but the jelly helps to not be so... The dry. peanut butter just so, stick so to my like, roof of the mouth. Yeah. Um, I also like a good egg salad sandwich. Pretty Yo, egg like salad. Really- egg salad's good. I've had too many bad, like, gas station egg salad well, sandwiches. Well, why would you do that to yourself? Well, because, like, when I was in high school, there was a gas station, like, a uh, five-minute walk from me. And I would just, I would get up at, like... Four in the morning randomly because I'd be up all night. It was senior year, so I'd skip school all the time. I didn't care about anything. And I'd be like, you know what? Playing video games all night. I'm depressed. Time to walk to the gas station. <laughs> and I'd be so like, you'd get like middle of the night egg salad yeah, sandwich. Yeah. That's and I'd buy an egg salad sandwich <laughs> and a Yoohoo. I used to drink <laughs> Yoohoo's all the time. Uh, it's it's called the chocolate drink. It's kind of like chocolate milk. Oh, okay. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. I really like the name. I was like, Yoohoo. So I'd buy Yoohoo's all the time. They were great. I haven't had a Yoohoo since I moved from Hawaii, and I miss them. I might go buy a Yoohoo after this. You Do it. <laughs> I don't want to get you addicted to Yoohoo again, though. Um, yeah. Now I want an egg salad sandwich. But it's pretty bomb. Pretty yeah. good. I it's also like tuna good. fish. Tuna fish is pretty good. Like tuna fish with pickles in it. Yeah, that's that's the way to go. Mm. That is the way to go. Yeah. I guess I just, when I like a sandwich, I like more of like a spread. More than, like, just ham and lettuce and stuff. I would like, like, peanut butter and jelly, tuna fish, egg salad, something, you know, like, you spread on top of it. I like, I, I guess if there was meat involved, I would prefer a burger mm. instead of just, like, a ham sandwich. I know you're a vegetarian. How long have you been a vegetarian? Um, like, a little over a year. Max a vegetarian? Max has been a vegetarian his whole life. He has never had meat. My good friend Jojo. Was a vegetarian his whole life until like <gasps> a year and a half. What probably. happened? He's just like, ah, I'm just gonna eat meat. <laughs> well, I know, but did he like? Did it hurt? No. Because I know. I know. I know some people. I, I don't think he had any problems. Mm, that's um, good. He went. He went vegan for quite a while, yeah. and then he's like, you know what? Yeah, I start eating. He doesn't eat a lot. Vegan. He like barely eats. Yeah, meat, but. no. Max has never had meat, but then he also is allergic to eggs, so. He- oh. Sad. I love it's eggs. really it's it's really sad. I, make eggs I, like I every also day. love eggs. I love eggs so much. It's sad mainly because eggs are in a lot of things. Yeah, and then sometimes it's yeah, not being easy allergic to, to tell. eggs is really annoying. Yeah, no. The last one of the last days I was we were at school before like we left for break. We were in Disneyland and we got something and we asked, "Are there eggs in this?" And then they said no. And then he had a really bad allergic reaction and it was really he He's died. A ghost now. <laughs> But it was real scary. Ghost Max. Ghost story starring <laughs> Max. <laughs> um, yeah, I used to know somebody that actually had, like, celiac. So oh, they really? Yeah. Eat, and they were also allergic to eggs. And I was like, fuck. That's hell. so sad. That's so sad. I was like, what do you eat? They're just like, water. <laughs> just drink some water. That's terrible. And final question from Julia. Favorite musical movie? And she said, have I asked this before? I don't remember. Sorry. I think she has, mm. but that's fine. Because Hannah's here. Yay, I'm here. Um, well, I love musicals. 
So. Yeah. She followed our good friend Julia. She loves musicals. On Letterboxd, she puts, I love musicals. I <laughs> thought <laughs> My name is Julia. Um, I love Sing Street. Sing Street's phenomenal. Um, so is Once. I have not seen Once, but I have seen Begin Again. Begin Again? Is, I also really like Begin Again. Begin Again is like, is underrated, I think. It's, I, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun and it's yeah. sweet and the music in it is good. And John Carney was like, I never want to work with Kira Knightley again. Really? <laughs> yeah, apparently Whoa. he really didn't like working That's with her. So like, funny. she was kind of like stuck up about everything. Hmm. Apparently he really yeah. liked working with fucking Adam Levine, though. He's like, yeah, he's nice. Really? He's nice. Wow. Which is like, like no one would have predicted yeah. that. Such a wild. Thing. I think it was just because Kira Knightley like didn't have any like musical training and stuff. Yeah, and she definitely was. And they were trying to go for a more like non amateurish like thing because Once mm. and Sing Street are about more amateur musicians. Yeah. Um, and Beginning is not really about that. So yeah, having somebody who's not character. like classically trained or even mm. trained at all is a tough thing to get over, especially yeah. when they're stuck up about it. Yeah. James Corden's in it. Um, yeah. Haley Steinfeld. Mark Ruffalo. Yeah. Some good people. Um, Mark Ruffalo's really good in that movie. He's so good. He's so good. Did you see Dark Waters? I did not. It's great. Is really, it? Really, really enjoyed really? it. I it pretty like much really... loved, like, everything except there was, like, a really bad CG part. Oh, no. <laughs> with, like, an angry cow. That's so weird. Yeah, it looks really interesting. Like, a really interesting story. Um, Mark Ruffalo's fantastic yeah. in that movie. We love Mark Ruffalo. He's a king. Thomas hates him. Musical? I like Mark Ruffalo. Have you seen Spotlight with Mark mm-hmm. Ruffalo? Fuck. It won Best Picture in 2015, yeah. I think. Yeah. Fantastic movie. Okay. Favorite music? I can guess. Little Shop of Horrors. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Followed by... Whoa. Phantom of the Paradise. Um, no? Fiddler on the Roof. High School Musical 2. Jesus Christ Superstar. Oh, yeah. Oh. Um... I just watched Fiddler on the Roof recently, and that fucking blew me away. Fiddler uh, on the Roof and Phantom are both. Uh, but mine would probably be Phantom of the Paradise, Sing Street, Fiddler on the Roof. I have never seen the movie Fiddler on the Roof. It's, I, it's like, fucking... I, I watched saw it. saw over the weekend it on, in Seattle, though. Oh, wow. The, like, I, live. It, I, it's great. I and saw I saw it at the college mm-hmm. when they did it. Yeah, same here. I saw it in high school. They did a really good job. Theater. They did. I When I was watching it, I just got, like... I was watching it in Seattle and you know when like the um the I don't know if it's like oh it's Laser Wolf's if that's how you say his name yeah, yeah. Like, Dead Wife oh. like oh, comes yeah. in the dream and I was watching it and I was like oh my god because Lizzie did that yeah. at the college and I just started like laughing to myself about it because I was like oh my god I forgot it's just so funny when Lizzie did it because I just did not know that that was happening and then all of a sudden she was like 15 feet in the air and screaming and I was so afraid for my life but <laughs> for the roof is great um Gwen Stefani totally stole a song from it nice yeah do you not know that no you know the song Rich Girl if I was, if I was a rich, rich girl. oh yeah yeah to- I, so the first time I watched Put the Roof we were all just like what? Did Gwen yeah. Stefani also, write the lyrics for yeah. this? What? <laughs> also, Lion King one and a half uses like the sunrise sunset song from it. Really? Yeah. Because <laughs> I remember. Isn't like, Lion King one and a half basically? Um, well, because no, wait, because like Lion just, King is Hamlet. Yeah. And then yeah. <laughs> when I was in high school, I would always go up to my friends and I'd be like, "Did you know that the Lion King?" was based on the American Civil War. I had to make up this big thing about how, like, Abraham Lincoln was Mufasa and Scar was John Wilkes Booth. Remember? When and I had this big elaborate reason. I was just bullshitting the whole time, but I got, like, a couple people to believe me. I, yeah. That could probably sound oh. convincing. Remember when the high school... You were in it, right? When the high school did Romeo and Juliet. He yeah. played Confederate. Juliet. What? <laughs> With, like, through the Civil War, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They did a Civil War version of Romeo and Juliet. What the fuck is wrong and with, it was, like, it was that school like, district? It was literally, like, exactly the same, except there was a Confederate flag on stage. And that was, like, what felt like the only God. difference. And, yeah. no, I was just talking about that with Peyton, because she 
audition for it. Mm. And when she auditioned for it, she said she had a really, and I remember her telling me the story, that she had a really bad migraine. So she just stood up on stage for like 60 seconds and didn't say anything. And just like... And then standing <laughs> ovation. Genius. And then, and then she got lights. She was like, just was supposed to do lights for the yeah. show. And then one night hit the wrong button and like made a bunch of lights go off. Oh, I remember like, that. Like a, like a basically a laser show. And... That's why Kate shouldn't really have responsibilities. But yeah. Oh, man. That was funny. <laughs> Good old Pete. Okay, final question. From my dear friend, Exy. Okay. What is your favorite music video from a cinematography standpoint? Mm-hmm. Oh, jeez. Fuck. I haven't watched a music video in a lot. Same. Man. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I'm like... Music video. Uh, I like the Sonic Youth music video that has Macaulay Culkin in it. Um, I can't remember the name of the song. I like... I don't know. Nothing like that has like great, breathtaking cinematography comes to mind. But... Um, oh, actually... I like uh, Crumb. Uh, they have a specific song. Lock It. Uh, that one's got a pretty dope music video. Epic. Yeah, so. Um, well, I like, I I don't really watch music videos that much, but. Yeah, same. Um, all the ones that Carlos Lopez Estrada has done for, like, clipping mm, are really yeah. good. And he did, um, Mr. Tillman, the Father John Misty song. Oh, okay. Um, and that one's really good, too. So probably those that was the director of Blind Spot, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. He went to Chapman. Is that why you're going? You're like, I saw Blind <laughs> What? I. Even though you I started waved him. going. That's Did you wave back? Yeah. That's how I saw Blind Spotting, was because I screened at our school and he was there and he did a QA and I was like, and then, well, because I was movie. taking a photo and then he saw me and that's so why I waved and then he waved back. He's really, he's really cool. Hmm. But yeah. Maybe one day I'll meet him. Yeah, he's maybe, really cool. Maybe one day I'll meet Davi Diggs. Oh, uh, maybe. maybe. He can be in that movie with King. Song Kang Ho, yeah, Adam Driver, well, and Mark Because he's going to be in the um, Snowpiercer show. Yeah. Did that, isn't that... That's coming out soon, right? Or it's already out? Something like that. Are they just doing a bunch of TV shows based off Bon Joon? Apparently. Huh. <laughs> huh. Um, well, I mean, Snowpiercer is more... Like relevant because it's based on a, I think a French novel. comic yeah. film or comic series. Parasites so. just I don't really know how they're. Yeah, gonna I, do I that. don't get. Yeah, it's a gonna, limited it, well, series. What is it going to be in English? I don't. I think that would be weird. I, I watched like a little clip I, where he was discussing it briefly, and he said it's going to focus on the characters from the movie, and he pointed at the cast from the movie. So if I, Song Kang Ho's in like an American produced thing, that'd be amazing because the closest thing he's been in is like Snowpiercer, Snowpiercer but. Uh, uh, Choi Woo Sheik, I believe his name is the the main kid in like the main guy in like the son. Uh, yeah, Parasite. Mm, so He's, he just uh, boarded onto an A twenty four film. Oh, cool! Yeah. Oh, nice. I thought the daughter in it oh. was I don't Park So Down. Yeah, <laughs> was awesome. Yeah, yeah, I like the. That they're all, they're all good. Pretty great. They all so deserve. Oh, well, they, they've been winning a bunch of rewards. Dumb. Like there's a, that award that they won where the and, cast and came on, Bob and you see Bong Joon Ho like smiling, was, holding his camera, that was the filming it. Shit that's <laughs> ever happened. It was so cute. I love them. Yeah. No, oh, there so was cute. that. There was that interview with Song Kang Ho. I might have. I might have talked about this last week, but he's like, I love being in America. Uh, everybody uh, thinks I'm sexy. <laughs> And he's like, in Korea, people do not think I'm sexy. People think I have kind of a weird face. I'm like, Sean Kango, you're so sexy. <laughs> so funny. Did you see the thing where, like, Bong Joon-ho was talking about the Oscars, and they were like, oh, like, how do you feel being nominated for, like, Best Director? And he was like, the Oscars are a really, like, local Yeah, but he show. said that, I think, a couple yeah. months ago. He's like, yeah, they're pretty, like, local. <laughs> and then he said that one thing where he's like, you know, Americans need to get used to, like, watching things in subtitles because yeah. once you get over that one oh, inch yeah. barrier when you're you open want... to a whole new world yeah that was his globes speech i think hmm. i hereby say we're skipping movie ideas do it do it do it do yeah, it it's fine. um because <laughs> i'm so scared a <laughs> little lower on time until i gotta start driving back 
So. Okay. Uh, my answer for the music video thing oh. was... Uh, <laughs> Sax Romer number one by the Mountain Goats and Woke Up New by the Mountain Goats, which was directed by Ryan Johnson. Oh. Both of them have really, sense. really great cinematography. You should watch them right after this. Um, okay, we're skipping movie ideas. It's fine. We'll do it. Let's talk about Blackjack, 1979. Yep. Ken Loach. Ken Loach. Guy who did Kess? Kess. Yeah. You heard of Kess? Or I, Daniel Blake? Those are his two most known films, I think. Mm. Uh, okay. Thomas, take it away. What's Blackjack about? All right. Blackjack is a movie that was supposedly like a big inspiration for, for Moonrise, Moonrise Kingdom. Kingdom. That's so obvious. Yeah. Yeah. I no, watched I like, it, and I then like I saw looked, that, and I'm like, No, I looked, that makes sense. I looked the movie up before I watched it, and then I saw that, and I was like, oh, okay, I'm interested. And then I watched it, and I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I haven't seen... All of Moonrise Kingdom. I walked. Oh, really? Yeah, it's great. I, I've seen the last like twenty minutes because I walked in when Garrett was watching it one time, mm-hmm. and I just kind of sat down and finished it with him. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's a fan pretty of similar Anderson, from what I so. saw. Yeah, me too. Um, but so the movie begins with this big guy named Blackjack. <laughs> Every time th- there's a movie with a big person, they're like, yeah, he was huge. Yeah. Then they say a height that's shorter than me. <laughs> so he's, like, he's six even, foot six. He wasn't even that much taller than some of the other yeah, people in the movie. He's six yeah. foot six. He was huge. I'm like, I'm six foot eight. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, he did, it's really He didn't even weird. look six foot six. He yeah. was like... Unless everybody else was like six two. Yeah, I guess theoretically it was in the 1750s, so they might have been wearing like heels mm-hmm. as well. But yeah. and people weren't as tall back then. Yeah, which is, I think, true. That's why yeah. Thomas <laughs> is so tall now. I yeah, I feel like Thomas would be four foot nine. <laughs> Oof. Hello, <laughs> I am Tommy. I am Ethan, the spirit of the forest. Anyway. Well, uh, he's taken to a wagon that's going to escort him to his death. He's hung off screen. We don't see that. But next thing we see, so basically there's like this crazy old widow in the town who like buys the bodies and trades them for brass. And she can, she basically like forces this kid named Bartholomew. Bartholomew Pickering. Yeah, her, Pickering. I think. Or something Dolly. like that. Dolly! Dolly! Yeah. Uh, Did you watch the movie subtitled? Yeah. yeah. I watched it on the Criterion channel. Mm-hmm. That's streaming service. Yeah. The, the audio is a little too muffled with that. Yeah. I probably it was like, able to understand. When it, when it started, I was like, Language is the same. And then it yeah. kept going. I was like, oh shit. Okay. That's English. <laughs> yeah, it's just very. Also, thick. is the Criterion channel like worth it? Because I had like, an old streaming so. service. They had an old streaming service? Yeah, it was Criterion <laughs> slash Filmstruck. Oh, then, yeah. And okay. then it shut down because it wasn't like getting enough, like. Yeah. I, I think the Criterion. It's not it too seems, expensive. It seems uh, a lot better. Yeah, it's not that expensive. And it seems a lot better because the issue with the last one was just like. So many good movies were on it, but the service sucked. So, like, every time I tried watching it, like, a lot of times, like, the movies would, like, lag and stuff like that. I've and never had... I had an issue, like, literally, we watched a couple movies for, like, movie day, like, right when it launched on the television. Uh, and there was a couple weird moments of it, like, just, like, stopping. Mm-hmm. But that was, like, two days after mm-hmm. it had launched. Yeah. Um, but I've never had an issue on my okay, computer. Cool. Cool, because a lot And of since, like, two, like, a week after it launched, I've never had an issue on the TV either. Cool. And it's really cool. They have a lot of, like, uh, behind-the-scenes stuff, and they have yeah. cool, like, double features where they'll, they'll pair, yeah. like, no, they a short that, film. And a, oh, yeah. They had all that on the old one, but it just was, like, I don't know why the service itself was just, like, really... Like, and, like, a lot of, like, it was, like, a lot of people... Like had the same issue, so I, I didn't. Oh, we've it been wasn't just we've been using it a lot, especially recently, cool. like when we watched Bergman and yeah, and, uh, cool. Kurosawa. Yeah, mm-hmm. and yeah, like I said, it's cheap. Yeah, it's not bad at all. And, yeah, it's and probably my of, favorite streaming. A service. lot of people support it. Like yeah. famous people. Anyways, but uh, so the old lady basically convinces Bartholomew. He, she's like, you stay here and watch the body while I go out. And, he's like, oh. and he's like, I need to go to my job. And she's like, okay, cool. Have fun staying here. He's like, miss, I need to go. She's like, okay, bye. And locks him in. <laughs> I guess this place has outside locks. Yeah. <laughs> so that he, you can't unlock on the inside? Yeah. yeah well, some locks, some locks, especially older locks, like only unlock with a key. 
Oh yeah, I guess and that's like both sides. Seventeen hundreds. I mean, I've been to places with locks like that that's now. Terrifying. Yeah, that's yeah. fucked up. Oh, and I'm like, I will kick down your door. But yeah, so basically, he just kind of like wanders over by Blackjack's body and notices, hey, this dude's still alive, and he and he's just like. Yeah, so he reaches in, pulls a spoon a out of his bent throat. bent spoon. <laughs> and, and the narrator's like, he survived the hanging because there was a bent spoon in his esophagus. Yeah, I guess somehow... Did he put it there? I, I was trying I, to... He, he, he was implying he put it there. Yeah, right? no, it was like it, so something he, could, like, he did. So he could, trick the, yeah. the hangman. So he survived, and he's basically like, I can't speak totally. He's like, er, what's your name? Bartholomew. Hey, too long. Too long. You're totally now. Totally. And they call him that for the rest of the movie, so no need to remember the Bartholomew Picker Ninny name. Um, Picker Ninny? I don't know. I, Pickering? Whatever. Come on, Donna? No. So, yeah. They hop out the window, they leave, and they instantly come across this wagon that's, like, stuck in some mud. And uh, Blackjack, like, picks up this really big stick and he plants He's like, I'm gonna kill him! And then uh, Tolly just runs up and, like, starts to help. But then he grabs a gun and he points it at Blackjack. And Blackjack's like, all right, chill. And he pushes the wagon out of the mud. And then um, they get some money. And then he's like, oh, that was a good idea. Um, Then he throws a rock in the middle of, like, this stream. And Blackjack's really all over the place. Yeah. That's my biggest problem is he... His character just fucking, like, really changes over, like, the course of, like, five minutes, like, four times. He feels a lot yeah. of things. I'm just like, is he okay? No. Um, so, yeah. Thank so you. He throws this rock, and Tolly's like, that's gonna kill somebody. And he's like, that rock is money. So they wait. A wagon comes. Stop. And they just stop. They don't even, they see it. They're like, well, better stop. Yeah, and then, um... Meanwhile, while all of this is going on, we got a look at this place called Beverly. There's this rich family there called the Carters. They're about to have, like, this big, like, political wedding. So they got to get rid of their crazy daughter. They have a daughter. She's nuts. So they have a meeting with some of the people who work at the Madhouse, and they're like, all right. The retreat, you mean? Uh, The retreat. So they're like, all right, here you go. Um, here's her daughter. Take her. And then this is the wagon that gets stopped by the rock. And then she, like, runs away into the Dwayne woods. Johnson runs out. And he's like, stop. He's like, hey, no, this is a stopping point. I'm going to need that toll. Um, so she runs into the woods. Blackjack sends Tolly in after her. So he goes and he gets her. And she's like, oh, do you see that? It's a long black pole with a golden top and a blanket and a lullaby. A long black tower with a golden top and a blanket against the sun or something like that. And then Tolly's like, you're fucking nuts. I don't see jack shit. And she's she's like, ah! She freaks the fuck out and starts hitting him. And then he's like, stop it! Yeah, and then she stops and then they like walk back to the area where they just come from. Everyone's gone. It's, everyone's so gone. Yeah. And it's just like, oh, okay. He's like, why did they leave? He's like, well, I'm also like, why did they yeah. leave? Yeah. They like never expect, they're just like, we're leaving. Yeah. And then it, it also sets up the fact that at this point, Jack's probably following them because he hears like that rustling in the bushes. And he's like, Jack, is that you? And Jack doesn't come out. And later we find out, like, he has been closely kind of tailing them. And it's like, why don't you just... Yeah, what what the fuck is wrong with you, Wouldn't Mr. it be Blackjack? easier if you just literally grabbed her there before he has any emotional attachment to her and then took her back to the madhouse? But no, instead you're just going to follow her for a few weeks and let her get comfortable and then take her to the madhouse? <laughs> yeah. I don't get his plan. But <laughs> he has a lot of feelings. Huh? He has a lot of feelings that aren't explained. But yeah. Okay. I'm, I I I kind of want to read the book. I want to see if it goes any oh, deeper yeah. into his character. But also, why was this movie called Blackjack? It wasn't about Blackjack. Yeah, I the don't... Adventures of Tolly. <laughs> um. So yeah, they basically wander for a little bit, and they find themselves at a fair, and then there's like this doctor there. <laughs> yeah, he's a snake oil salesman. Yeah, he is. But he's like a nice man. I was. Yeah. I he was probably my favorite character in the movie. Thought it was yeah. very interesting, but he he's got this gig where he you're like me. 
<laughs> what do you mean he tricked you? <laughs> when, when he says, like, the elixir thing and the lady comes back. You thought baby. that was actually... What? <laughs> what I didn't right? know, but I was like, what? what? I mean, maybe, maybe in the, like, movie, like, oh, this is a real thing that happens. In I know, I was like, I don't know where this movie's going. Um, I mean, a yeah, man so did he... survive by swallowing a spoon. I, we should try that, see if it works. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be the uh, test. Um, I'll be the spoon. Oh, oh no. <laughs> but, uh, so, yeah, basically he has this, like, little bit that he does where he's like, I've got this fucking youth elixir here, and then he has this little kid named Hatch come up, and he steals it, and he runs away. And then this lady comes up with a baby, and she's like, this is my boy who just stole that potion. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I'm going to drink it. He's like, don't drink it. Yeah, he's like, I warned you. I warned the boy. And then he's like, I got to go. The cops are going to be coming. <laughs> and everybody's like, wait. Well, well, he's like, oh, okay. Here you go. <laughs> like, Here you go. And then um, right before he's about to leave, Tolly and Bell come up, and he's like, oh, no, no, no. I can't sell you guys any. And they're like, no. She's fucking nuts. We need you to fix it. He's like, this might be my path to success. Okay, I'll take you guys under my wing. So then they meet um, Hatch and, like, the lady with the baby, like, right outside of town. Hatch sucks. Yeah, Hatch is a little shit. <laughs> I fucking hate him. He's such a little bitch. I um, wanted the end of the movie to just be Blackjack walking up to Hatch and just, like, snap his neck. Well, to be well, fair, does, does... Ha- Hatch gets what Hatch had coming. Um... But, uh, yeah, so basically, like, they meet up, they wait for the rest of the fair to come, and then a bunch of the dwarves come with a blackjack. What? What? I don't know, you're both oh. just staring at me. Okay, I'll keep going. <laughs> um, let me pull up my notes so I can see what happens next, because I don't quite remember. Blah, 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 blah. blah. Blah, everyone, go fair. All right. Um, Thank you. Yeah, so basically, the next night, Blackjack, like, shows up, and he's like, hey, when the time comes, that girl's going to the hospital. She's worth 10 pounds, goddammit. And then, um... Put it on the sink for a second. It's okay. The next morning, Hatch steals some of Belle's clothes from a hole that's in her wagon. And then he And then he tries a, to stab Tolly. Yeah, he gets in a little fight with a knife on Tolly. There's like, oh, they're just having fun. He's like, what if I a knife? <laughs> and Tolly's like, I'm gonna fucking kill you. Of course, Tolly like, like beats good. the shit out of him, but then Blackjack just throws Tolly off and then Hatch gets away. Like, uh, <laughs> yep. And then Hatch kinda reminds me of you. Oh. Because you seem like mischievous, like Hatch. You're like <laughs> uh, you know, I don't. I don't think I'm anywhere near as. Thomas uh, isn't a little bitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, so, this begins the adventures of Hatch, where he goes and he just does a lot of blackmailing. He does. He goes <laughs> to the hospital where uh, Bell's supposed to be, and he's like, "I know where Bell is. Um, I'm going to tell the Carters if you don't give me money." So they give him money, and he's like, all right. And then he goes, and he tells the Carters. And he's like, I'm going to go tell the family that you're about to get married into. You don't give me some money. So they give him So some he gets money. like 100 pounds or something like that. Yeah, something like that. a lot of money. Or 150, I think. And then he, just summing this up now, it kind of takes place in a different order. Um, interspliced with other scenes. But he ends up going back to the hospital. And he tries to bribe them out of more money. And they're like, okay, cool. Um, yeah, we'll give you some more money. And then they're like, all right, he's going back to Beverly. So let's beat him there. And it's like, why did you give him 25 pounds? And it's like, because maybe he'll stop and spend some along the way. Slow him down a little. So they, uh, go back to the Carter estate and, uh, Hatch, like, climbs in through the window. And, like, right as the doctors arrive, we hear a gunshot. And, uh... Mr. Carter dies because he was going to shoot Hatch, but Hatch kind of like wrestled around with him and uh, turned the gun on him, and the guy ended up accidentally shooting himself. All right, now back to the Bell Tolly plot line. What's going on over there? So, yeah, there's like a scene where uh, 
Tolly or Tolly's the new potion boy. He sucks at it though. He gets caught the first time he does it. Literally the first time. She's like, "Don't drink that." And he's like, "Oh shit." And he's like, "Uh." <laughs> then the guy's just like, "Oh, good. Thank you, man." <laughs> um <laughs> And then uh, uh let's see. There's like a scene where Tolly's reading and Bill just comes up and like throws a bunch of flowers in his face and annoys him and then he like throws the flowers down. And she's like, "Go back to your uncle because he's Constantly talking about his uncle who sails the sea. He's like, we'll go there. And then uh, he tells her about the sea. Uh, then Blackjack attempts to steal something, gets caught and kicked out of the camp. Totally writes his uncle, but then like Belle shows up and she's like, oh, aren't, don't my bosoms look nice? And then he's like, I'll marry you, whatever. <laughs> they fall in love. She's like, "You like my tea?" <laughs> yeah. He's like, oh, "I do very much." Um, and then let's see. And then more of the hatch stuff that I already said. Uh. Anyway, she she becomes not insane. Yeah. Over so the course of she the basically film. yeah around this point is where we. She starts remembering things, and Tolly's like, "Oh, she's actually not whack back yeah. shit." Crazy. It's like, well, "Hey, maybe keeping people in a confined <laughs> space where you don't actually try to rehabilitate them uh, is a good thing." Yeah, so he uh, basically tells the doctor, and the doctor's like, "Oh, great, um, I've cured this girl," <laughs> and then she remembers. She's like, "Wait, I'm from Beverly," and then. They're coincidentally near Beverly, and the doctor goes to, uh, like, see the father and talk to him. Basically be like, well, I Hatch killed your daughter. kills them. Yeah, but Hatch has already killed him at this point. Shoots him in the back. He's like, yeah, I do. He's, like, pretending that it was an altercation and the guy shot himself. Mm. <laughs> and then it turns out later that Hatch just shot him in the back. Ah, okay. Yeah. See, I thought it still could have been a thing where he just got shot. Well, no, because but I guess like, it makes more sense that he yeah, he went like this. He's like, oh, well, because they were wrestling around. So I thought maybe rigged, like like maybe it had fallen out, but I'm pretty sure they allude to Hatch like <laughs> killing him in cold blood. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. Hatch is like a psychopath. Murder. Um, murder. So then the doctor comes back and he's like, uh, yeah, do your dad's dead. I and mean, he pulls Tolly aside and he's like, don't tell her this, but uh, he, he, killed, he so. suicided. He suicided. But then Blackjack <laughs> tells her. Yeah. Because he like wants Tolly back and he's like being a weirdo. Uh, did we mention when Blackjack just stole stuff? Yeah. Got kicked I, out? Okay. I said all that. Um, so yeah, he Blackjack comes back like that same night and half the people are like split. They're like, don't. Don't take him back. And then one But it's like, like one guy. You can like, sleep in my wagon. And one guy's like, fuck you. If he steals from you, you're not getting money. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so basically, yeah, Blackjack tells Belle, he's like, your father suicided. She's suicided. <laughs> suicided. <laughs> it's, it's so I funny. Love <laughs> it's still funny. Like, he's suicided. <laughs> You mean he killed himself? Yeah, he suicided. You have to go back to man. <laughs> it's like, yeah, dumb bitch, he fucking suicided. <laughs> uh, and he's like, so the madness is in you. You have to go to the madhouse. <laughs> so sad. So you do not suicide. This is not how you love a good man. He's a good boy. <laughs> so, <laughs> so she leaves while Tolly's asleep, and then Tolly wakes up and he confronts Blackjack because he knows what happened. And then Blackjack just throws him on the ground a couple times. And then he gets, he ends up like, one of the ladies isn't going to tell him where she went. But then she lets it slip and then he like runs away. He's like, I'm going. And he's like, he like sleeps in the back of a wagon. And he has like his own little journey. And then he gets, he like shows up at the place, knocks on the door and he keeps getting turned away. So he gets a job and he starts like writing bell letters and dropping off these baskets and but Hatch is there. Yeah. Hatch is there. He's taking bitch. refuge because, like, the doctors yeah, like, are like, I'm working as a housekeeper. Yeah, the doctors are like, you're going to need to lie low. You can come work at the retreat. Uh, so one day, Black Jack and one of the guys from the camp show up and they're like, we've come. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, he's like, I'm sorry. I'm, I've come to get the girl. So he's like, where's Belle? They won't let me see her. And then Blackjack just walks and he's like, I break down the door. Yeah. And he breaks down the door. They see it's Hatch and they're like, what the fuck are you doing here? 
and then like totally runs upstairs, finds her, like kind of runs back down. And he's like, she's, she's up, up here. here. I'm and then, totally. And then like fucking blackjack just fucking steams up the stairs, like gets her out, and then they run away. And all of this is going on, and Hatch is still a little bitch. <laughs> is still a little bitch. He's like, oh, and then you're, you're a slasher, right? And he like just lets out this like axe murderer. Uh. Who he then used to be he a, was butcher. a butcher. Yeah. I was yeah. like, there are lambs to slaughter. And then he has one leg. Yeah. <laughs> he like but hops this, down the stairs. Yeah, he just... With an axe. Yeah, yeah, he's got an axe, and he just follows uh, Hatch, and then Hatch is like, no, no, not me, not me! And then he turns around a corner, and we hear his scream, and he's dead. Because he's a little fish. <laughs> After letting slip that he had killed the dog. Yeah, he, he had done that, too. And it's like, oh, man, I'm so glad that that kid died, because he was so me annoyed. Too. So annoying. So glad Thomas died. <laughs> Me too. Uh-huh. Um, so yeah, then they like go away. They basically go back to the old lady from the beginning and they're like, where's the body of uh, Carter? And she's like, it's over at this place. And then they get the medical documentation where they find out he was shot in the back. And then they're like, oh, she, he didn't suicide it. Okay. And then. So then it's like, it's okay to take her out then. Yeah. And mm-hmm. then they go. Uh, he's been writing to his uncle throughout yeah. the whole movie. And he's like a sea captain and he's docked at the shore. Yep. And they go on the ship. And she's like, look, it's a black tower with a golden top. And he's like, wow. And she's like, see, it was that all along. And he's like, wow. Yep. And then the movie ends. Yeah. With a, with a little sea jaunty. Yep. Sea shanty. Classic sea shanty. It was pretty good. It was pretty an epic song. Yeah. It was like, I was dancing, I was dabbing. Yeah. This is a cute little movie. Yeah. yeah. I was not vibing with it, with it for like the first half. Neither was I. I the thought first the first it. like pace, I thought the pacing was really weird. Like it would, it would cut as if it was going to skip a long time and then it would be like an hour later or something. I yeah. was like, what the the, the first time I watched it, I was really turned off by some of the pacing and some of the scenes were like really dark. Yeah. Um, like visually? I, yeah, I, 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 know, I, I liked some of it. I liked some of the dark scenes. Like when he first wakes up in the from the coffin, his like face is yeah. shrouded in shadow. Yeah. I'm like, this is good. And then I'm like, this but is some, great. But then it some just of, felt like they didn't have. Yeah, it felt like budget. after after <laughs> I saw some of the later scenes, I'm like, oh, I don't think that was intentional. No, yeah. 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 And, like, yeah. The girl who plays Belle is bad. Yeah. I, I wasn't a fan. I also wasn't a big fan of Belle as a character. It yeah. felt like her only character was that yeah. she was insane. Yeah. And I'm not usually a fan of that. She was I'm more like, cool. plot device. You can make insane characters. characters, but can you make them characters <laughs> instead of just you know, plot devices? <laughs> yeah. Um, I do like Tolly though. Yeah, to- mm-hmm. Tolly was nice. You know who Tolly reminds me of the uh, actor? Who? Ferdia Walsh uh, Pool, I think. The guy from Sing Street. Oh, really? Yeah. His name? Yeah. It's a mouthful. Well, yeah, because he's fucking Irish. Yeah. Um, he's in Vikings. I haven't seen it, but I want to watch it because he's oh. in there. They're making a, a live version of Sing, Sing Street. Street Broadway. Yep, I'm very excited. Even though. There's I Julia! I get to see it, but. Um, oh. yeah. Julia just messaged me on Discord, oh. and she was the one that showed me the Sing Street uh, Broadway musical poster. Oh, really? Yeah. That's funny. Because we always watch pro shots of Broadway musicals together, or even just, like, cameras. People, people like, like, I always want to know who's who's the person filming, because I was like, that's you paid a lot of money good for, for, you. for that. I'm proud of you. Thank you. I wanted to watch Hamilton. <laughs> They're going to release that, actually. I mean, yeah, and they're doing a movie. I think this year. I think they're doing In the Heights, the movie comes out. Well, yeah, that comes out in the summer. What? In the Heights, the movie. There's a trailer. Is that... that Oh, yeah, I I watched the trailer. Yeah, but I don't know if we're doing a Hamilton, like... I I mean, I'm sure they will do a movie. Yeah, I think they're... I think what people always talk about as the Hamilton movie is them just releasing the footage of them on Broadway. The bro shot would be great, because there's some really, really good... I think that's supposed to come out this year. Like, like, cause Lynn has like talked about it. Good. Cause he said, he was like, yeah. Let's get Lynn on the podcast. He was like, everyone who saw the original Broadway cast won't have room to brag anymore. Cause we're going to release the footage. And I was like, Good. thank God. I King. think that should be released the same day. <laughs> Broadway is a classist structure that feeds on the poor. I mean, no, it actually feeds on the rich, but yeah. the poor can't see it. Yeah. It's bad. <laughs> Fuck Broadway. All right. Speaking of Broadway, um, I forgot to mention this. Marriage Story, 
Mm. Uh, somebody was talking about how Noah Baumbach wrote it kind of about his own divorce and stuff. Yeah. And somebody's like, they should have made it closer to his real life where he had to write the script of Madagascar 3 to pay for his divorce. And we were talking about why he did Madagascar oh, 3. That That's why. Funny. So now we know why. Oh, man. That's really I, funny. Because, really yeah, happy. it was with... um. What's her butt? Jennifer, Jennifer Jason, Jason Lee. Lee. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, R.I.P. Their marriage. <laughs> I was like, did she die? <laughs> um, Just the love. Is there anything else I want to say about this movie? Yeah, I thought Blackjack's character development was very strange. Yeah. It, it, uh, it was, especially especially yeah. the scene from when he leaves. Like, he s- tries to steal money. And then he's back, like, the next night. He's like, sorry. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. And then also, like, they don't show anything about him when he, like, has the falling out with Tolly. And then he's just like, sorry. I would have liked to see more of that, maybe. Yeah, maybe if they had, like, given a couple of scenes devoted to him at the camp after Tolly left where he's like, oh, I feel kind of bad or something. Yeah. It was definitely strange that he and the, like, two doctor people left when they went up the hill because the whole thing is that they were like, oh, my God, we lost her. Yeah. And then... And I'm like, well, you lost her because you fucking left. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. didn't lose her. You waited, like, that's, why, that's, uh, yeah. that's also the reason I like this. And they and much the, more. It yeah. made more sense. And, like, and they, still they go after her. Dinner. Dinner. Like, they send some random boy. Oh, mm-hmm. totally can do it. And then they're like, well, he'll find us. <laughs> yeah. What'd you give the movie, Thomas? Is it the same score you gave it the first time? No. Seven. Okay. What about you? Oh, God. I didn't think about this part. Um. Yeah, I would probably give it... I think seven. I was sitting at like a five for the first half, but I really like the second half. So yeah. I'm at a six. Mm. It's it's sweet. Yeah, I like it, and I, I feel like I'd really like Cass because it's apparently very similar direction style, mm-hmm. and apparently there's a lot of better lighting. <laughs> <laughs> I think they use natural light. like they they have good use of natural light in this movie. They just there's just bad use of it. There's just some points where they're like I'm just like can you put a candle and there's like. And they go past a window, like, you know, they're no longer in front of a window. And I'm yeah. like, oh, it's pitch black. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Yeah, like, the scenes at the doctors were fine because there was, like, the yeah. windows were big. Yeah, absolutely. But then, like, with the coffin scene, while I liked the coffin scene, there was a lot of, in that same town, it's just like, I can't fucking see no, anything. Yeah. yeah. It was like, get some So was that a 6.666 repeating forever out of 10 is our average. So yeah, go watch it. It was on, uh, was this on Criterion? Yeah. Oh, it leaves, um... The 31st. It leaves, like, the day after this podcast releases, or, like, a couple days after, so... Oh. Watch it, quick. Yeah. Okay, Killer Joe by William Fried... What's his name? Yeah, Friedkin, I think. Friedkin. You know him? Director of The Exorcist. Killer Joe. So this movie is about... Uh, I always get Emile Hirsch and... Pedro Pascal confused because I think they look pretty similar. They don't. <laughs> <laughs> I think they look pretty similar. Maybe it's just a mustache. I was just like, is that the Mandalorian? I think and then Neil I'm like, no, it's not. just kind of looks like God. Dirty. <laughs> Especially in this movie. He's just like, take a shower. He, you know how, like, I was saying, like, I didn't know, like, Lena Dunham from anything, and you're like, oh, she's in Once Upon a Time. I was like, that makes sense. And then, like, Emil Hirsch is in it too, Once Upon a Time. And I was mm. like, I don't fucking, like, I don't remember him being in it at all, but I believe it. Yeah. Same thing when he said that. I was like, oh, yeah, that makes sense that, that she was in it with him. I was like, hmm. Hmm. Uh, I don't remember who he is. Who anyway, he this movie is about Emile Hirsch. is the main character. Believe it or not, it's not Killer Joe. Uh, he plays... What the fuck is his name? No, I didn't bother learning any of their names. Just their oh, they have dumb rules. names. One of their names isn't it, like... Hansel, something like that. Yeah, Anzel. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think that's the dad's. That isn't is it the dad. Ansel? Ansel. Ansel. Yeah. I've met people named that. Well, it's a dumb name. It is a kind of a dumb. Oh, it's Sorry, Chris. Ansel. The main character's name is Chris. Chris, Ansel, Ansel, Sharla, and then Dottie. Dottie. Dottie yeah. Yeah. Which I've met. I've met a lot of people named Dottie, and I'm just like, I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That sounds like you're 107 years old. Yeah. <laughs> 
and very racist. Yeah. Anyway, so Emil Hirsch, uh, he plays Chris, and he the movie opens up with him at the, like his parents' trailer park or his dad's trailer park home, and he's like, "Hey, open up!" And it's pouring down rain. He's telling his dog to shut the fuck up. He's is that their dog? Because he looks like he's almost attached to the place next. To I have no idea, and I think that's kind of like the intention is like, who the yeah. fuck's dog is yeah. this? Um, but he eventually gets in. Uh, his dad's there. Sandman is his dad. Yeah, Sandman is his dad. <laughs> Which, uh, personally, I like Thomas Hayden Church as an actor. Yeah. Um, from Spider-Man 3. Uh, I think he's pretty good in this movie. There's a couple scenes that are a little... Wild. Especially in the early the early portion of this film, there's a couple scenes that I'm just like... Especially the opening scene. His mouth like, is always open. He's yeah. always like... That's how... <laughs> I wasn't sure if that was just his acting, or I think it's, it's the character. Just, it, it because the characters are all, like... Rednecks. Yeah, they're all rednecks. Um, so Emil Hirsch has gotten into trouble, and he needs to borrow six grand from his dad. Because he needs to pay back, like, these loan sharks, or they're going to kill him. And the dad's like, well... Better get out of town. He's just like, just give me $1,000. I can hold them off until then. He's like, I don't have that much money. So then immediately he's just like, how would you like to make $50,000? And the dad's like, okay, what do we do? He's like, we get our, we get my mother murdered. Because he's been told by uh, someone that his mother's boyfriend, right? It's a secret. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> At this point, is it? Yeah, they don't reveal that until the very end. It's like a well, big But one. they say his name. Do they say Rex told? They they don't say where he found out about Killer Joe. I think they might have said where he found out about the I think they say where he found out about the money. Yeah, yeah they, they say where he found out about the money. Yeah, but apparently um, the, her, his little sister, Dottie, uh, is the main beneficiary of his mother's uh, life insurance policy, which is $50,000. So they have this idea to hire this guy, Killer Joe, who's a detective, but a hitman on the side. Because cops are evil. Yep. Um, and he charges $20,000 up front, apparently. And they're like, okay, we just get him to do this. And then we get the 50000 we pay him back. And then I pay back my loan sharks and I'm not dead. So they have this idea. They're like, this is brilliant. It's brilliant. It's genius. Um, so they, they set up the appointment with fucking Killer Joe. And he shows up at the house at first and he meets Dottie. And Dottie is, um, wait, this is just like Blackjack. The two main girls in it are also insane. Yeah. This is the same movie. We watched the same movie twice. I mean, they're not the same movie. Not the same um, Dottie, it turns out later on, she reveals that like her mother tried to murder her when she was a little kid, and since then, she's pretty much been crazy. Okay, um, how old is she in this? I mean, the actress is twenty-two. Yeah, I looked that up, um, and then I think they said that she's supposed to be like eighteen or nineteen. Yeah, right? she's but she's practically a child. Yeah, the whole movie. This yeah. movie's not. There are no good people in this movie. Theoretically, they Dottie's treat her fine. like she's like fifteen. Yeah, because she's like she acts. She acts like yeah. she's twelve. Yeah. Um, well, then, yeah. doesn't she anyway, say she that? She says it. Yeah. yeah. She's, and that threw me off, and then I had to. Yeah. yeah no, this movie's crazy. really gross. Yeah. I liked it, but it's very gross. Did you watch the unrated one? Maybe. I watched whichever one was on Tubi. Yeah. I think that is the unrated version. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I don't know. There's there's a lot of scenes that made me like sick to my stomach. I'm like, yeah. Bro. Yeah, this movie is very gratuitous. Anyways. Just like um, a Serbian. A Serbian film for rednecks. Uh, not really. It's not that bad. Uh, Serbian film is the best movie ever made, by the way. You should watch it. I know it. You should watch it ten times in a row. With Max. I'll give you five bucks. Um, okay, what happens then? So Killer Joe meets Dottie, and like he can tell she's not like all there in her mind. But he's like, I don't want to fuck her fuck is going on so when he meets up with the the dad and the son they're like we don't have twenty thousand dollars they're like they're like we can't go to you for some reason they're like we have to take a beer break for like 
ever at work. Yeah. So it's fine. We can't leave work, but we can go right next door. Yeah. So they meet up at like an abandoned, I think it was like a, a restaurant, a bar or something. Because yeah. yeah. they're like playing pool. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's like, you don't ever make me fucking <laughs> change plans again. Matthew McConaughey, I really liked in this movie. I thought he was good. Oh, Thomas didn't like him. Did you didn't like him either? I like, I mean, I think I like Matthew McConaughey. So. I, I like Matthew McConaughey too. It yeah, was just, so it felt just... like uh, he was playing Matthew McConaughey, but grosser. <laughs> Perfect. Killer Joe kind of reminds me of Matthew McConaughey, but grosser. So like, like the way the character's written, I'm like, perfect. Maybe that's why I was good with it. Because it seemed like Killer Joe was written as a gross version of Matthew McConaughey. Mm. He's kind of hot, though. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> um, anyway, he says that it's actually 25000 They're like, okay, fine, but we don't have it right now. He's like, I need it up front. And they're like, no, please, we'll do anything. He's like, okay. Let me have your daughter as re- I know, retainer. And I was like, what the fuck? So he pretty much wants to, like, date the daughter and sleep with her yeah. as, like, payment until they can pay him. And they're like, oh, uh, okay. So, so, yeah, we cut to the Black Olive scene. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Sharla, who is Thomas Hayden Church's wife in it is like on the phone she's like yeah I've got the pictures <laughs> and she's just looking at pictures of herself like sucking a dick yeah <laughs> and like riding some cockle no you can't see your face in it it's good and then, uh, Dottie... so it, it sets up very early on that she's cheating on Thomas yeah. and, yeah. and Dottie shows up and she's like ooh you got yourself a boyfriend don't worry I won't tell my daddy <laughs> and she's, she's like, like why not <laughs> he seems like a he... Thomas Hayden Church was probably like the nicest man pers- character besides Dottie. Like, he wasn't a good person, but yeah. he seemed the less evil, I guess. Like, he's just dumb. He's very dumb. He, like, can't put anything Nothing together. together. His son, er- like, pretty early on is like, are you fucking stupid? But, uh, yeah, basically, they kind of, like, segue into the whole, like, oh, you know, we're gonna be having a Killer Joe over for dinner tonight. Why don't you uh, get a dress? Look nice. And then... And she's like, are we going to be dressing up? And she's like, oh, yeah. Turns out they're not actually going to be there. It's just going to be yeah. Killer Joe and Dottie. Um, yeah, so... Mm. Fantastic. <laughs> that scene. That scene. There are, like, two scenes, like, both, like, the dinner scenes, like, the date scene and the dinner scene later on are, like, really long. So and, like, long. Really, like... They're really creepy. Long. <laughs> They're long compared to the yeah, like the rest of the movies. But I, I didn't like, particularly notice with the like first date scene, but that like final dinner scene, I was like, because I looked at the like runtime left of the movie up until that, and I was like, oh, there's like twenty minutes, right? Or yeah, yeah. And then, well, and like with the the first like their date scene, it like also just compared to like everything else. Yeah, in the rest of like the movie, it's just it's out of all the, the scenes, films, the, like, the film's three. made up of setup to make yeah. these two scenes happen, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. So there's this date scene where basically like the the dad and the brother are like trying to get her into the dress, and she's like, "I'm gonna go change." She's like screaming and crying. So she hides in her room, and here. This scene, because I was almost like, maybe he's not like a maybe total killer. Piece Joe's of shit. like a good guy because he's like he's you, secretly just trying to get her he's out like, of this. You situation. can stay in the room as long as you want, and it seems like he was trying to make her comfortable. I'm like, all right, this is still creepy. And then, like five minutes later, you're like, go put on the dress. Yeah, and, and he's, he's like, okay, he's so dressed up, and he has flowers. Yeah. It's like, well, it's kind of sweet. Maybe he's just like a nice but man. So I thought scary. maybe it was just a rapey skin on like him. Like maybe he's not going to sleep with her, but try to get her out of this house. Yeah, I'm like, no, Killer Joe. Maybe this movie's about Killer Joe not being <laughs> not just a killer, but a kind man. Yeah, but <laughs> kind no. Joe. It, like, it quickly shattered. He's like, go put on the dress chance. for me. She's like, oh, right now. He's like, yeah. And she, like, starts to walk to her, her room. And she's like, where are you going? Puts a chair in the and fucking... And like, do it right here. <laughs> Puts a chair. And then it cuts to her. And then it cuts back to him. And he's, like, immediately sitting down, like, super comfortable, like, legs crossed. And I was like, wow, you're really fast. Yeah. And then he's like, all right. 
take off your dread or take off your clothes, leave your brassiere and your underwear on. Now take them off after he turns around and like, put the dress on. Come up behind me. How old are you? Twelve? So am I. And then ah! It's like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Gross scene happens. Speaking of that guy that I talked about earlier, the 30-year-old with the 16-year-old. Yeah. He was lying and saying he was 20 on Facebook. <laughs> oh my god. But, ew. Gross. Anyway. Yeah, so that happens, and then Dottie, like, falls in love with him, I guess. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Because she's like, I'm, she said she was only in love with, like, one person ever. And in, in she grade. keeps bringing up this concept of pure love. Yeah. Because she's not all there. Uh, there was also that gross part. This is the part where I, I realized that they had signed the D on Killer Joe being any sort of a guy who was going to take her away, but she's like, I'm a virgin. He's like, I know. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, no, that's well, just Well, and then in the anything. beginning of the movie, when this, like, Emil Hirsch and then, like, the dad are talking in the car and then they're talking about Dottie and he's like, I just feel, like, so bad for her and everything. He's like, because she's, like, a virgin. I was like, what does that have to do with anything? I mean, obviously, I know this is going to come up later in the movie because you just explicitly mentioned it for no reason. But I was like, also, gross. Yeah. Any, like, brother talking about that? So gross. (laughs) And dad, it's like, ah. But anyways. Fucking white trash family, though. Yeah. Um, so, Yeah. That happens, and then I don't remember what happens immediately after that. Well, and then also, the, um, the wife is... Is that after that? When is the wife at the motel? I think it's pretty close uh, to here. Mm-hmm. Um, it shows just it shows just a quick scene of this guy in a Corvette or something like that get yeah. out with a big cowboy hat, and he goes in, and, like, Charles is there, and they kiss, and then the scene cuts. And I believe the next scene is Emile Hirsch... Um, he's just like walking around, I think. And then, um, these, oh yeah, he walks out of, yeah, he he walks out of a restaurant or something and these two guys on bikes are like, Hey, where's our money? Well, no, cause he goes and he bets money on. Oh yeah. He bets a thousand dollars on on horses horses and immediately loses it Yeah, and then walks out and these guys are like, Hey, where's our money? We gave, you said a couple days, like four weeks ago. And he's like, oh, it's right. And then he just starts running. That scene was also pretty long. Yeah. A lot of running. Yeah. And I didn't think the chase choreography was very good. It was so... And then he's, like, hiding behind the wall. And I'm like, keep fucking running. They're right there. Like, you know they're right there. Yeah. Like, he's I just like, 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 he's literally <laughs> so out of breath. He's like... <laughs> I'm like, I, I don't care how bad of shape you're in. Like, what yeah. the fuck are you doing? Yeah, seriously. <laughs> like, it would have made, it would have been better if he had, like, tripped on something and, like, yeah. hurt his leg or something. And he's like, ah, I can't move. Like, but he's just like, <gasps> and I'm like, just run doing that. And he hears the guys and he's just like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's and they're so like, out of, <gasps> he's so out of breath. Yeah. And then they beat the shit out of him. And they do. Digger Sloan's yeah. comes out, the guy who lent him the money. And he's like, hey. I like, I like you. They like talk. He's like, hey, sorry, I couldn't come to your wife's birthday party. He's like, yeah, you missed a big party there. There was like 200 people or something. And he's like, no, there wasn't 200 people. Well, at least 100 people. <laughs> Just say random shit. Um, and then they beat the shit out of him. He's like, don't give me my money in a couple days. You're going to die. Yeah. Pretty much. So he talks to... Uh, well, he goes home and he's like, oh! He's like, oh, no, no, Matthew McConaughey like, okay, like, opens the door and he's just naked. Naked. So naked. He's just naked, walking around a house that isn't his. And I'm like, that's, that's a that's a move, I guess. Yeah, and then uh, he's like, I oh, just took a beat and go back to bed, everybody. <laughs> he's so naked, like, and behind the door for some reason. <laughs> yeah, he's like, oh! He's <laughs> so weird. <laughs> He probably, like, heard somebody outside. He's like, I got <laughs> Yeah, and then... He seems like somebody that would be super paranoid. Like, a detective that's yeah. also a hitman seems like he would be very paranoid. And then they literally are like, he's fine. Yeah. Everyone leaves. But, um... Emil Hirsch, like, the next day is like, hey, when are you going to do it? Because I'm going to die soon. And he's like... Tonight. Tonight. And then, like... It might have been even, like, later that day. He's like, I don't want to do it anymore. He's like, here, follow me. And they get in a car together. Yeah, because he's at, drive. like, the police station or something. Yeah, and it looks like he's getting ready yeah. to go kill her. And he's like, don't do it. He's like, get in the car, come with me. And they drive to, like, a 
like like a, bar a restaurant that's like closed for the night. Yeah, it, it has like a, an abandoned car. He opens the trunk and the mother's just dead inside. He opens the trunk of the car. Yeah, that they that they've been in. driving. Yeah. yeah, and it looks like the other car might have been the mother's. Yeah, and they're like, well, she's already dead. So they put her in the car and blow up the car and then drive away. Yeah, and then he's really, like, oh. yeah, really weird tactic. They just because he like pours all the alcohol in her and then he like. Blows weed on her, like yeah, yeah, on her yeah face like, like, like cigarette smoke and yeah. stuff. It's like yeah, 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 they generally wouldn't be able to like find any of your saliva for yeah. this or anything. Because does does he leave it in the car? I don't know. I mean, if but then he does, does blow. Either way, then he blows like, up. Yeah, yeah, so it's just like okay. <laughs> There's just like a uh, one person that has a really good nose. She was smoking yeah. cigarettes <laughs> before this car exploded. <laughs> um, and then they. The next day, there's, like, a newspaper about it, and they try to go get the money, and it turns out that uh, the beneficiary wasn't Dottie at all. It It was was Rex, Rex. her boyfriend. And they're like, what? And they like, the dad's like, I'm going to beat the shit out of you to his son. Yeah, and he's like, who told you about Killer Joe? Ah, shit. Yeah, it was Rex all along. He had told her yep. him about everything. The 50000 doubled because it was an accident. Yeah, they find out at the end that, like, during that dinner scene, that it's like, hey. Well, and then there's the one scene where uh, Matthew McConaughey pulls over yeah. Rex. Yeah, Matthew McConaughey pulls over Rex and then it just cuts away. Yeah. And he's like, hey, Rex. And then um, after that... Um, basically, Emil Hirsch is like, Dottie, come with me. We're, we're going to Peru. Oh, yeah, because they go to the funeral. <laughs> yeah, they're like, well, I'll drive you to the funeral. But he's like, no, let's let's just go. She's like, no, I want to go to the funeral. He's like, fine, I'll take you. And he, like, dropped, or she just goes to the funeral. And he goes and buys his, it buys his gun. He buys a gun. He's like, I'm going to kill. Yeah, so. We don't know who. <laughs> he's but, just going to kill. Yeah, so. And also his makeup looks. The family yeah. gets home for dinner. The dad and the mom, and then Killer Joe's there, and they're like, we brought home some uh, Kentucky FC, or... K-Fry-C. 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 Yeah. I'm like, is that how people say it in some places? I guess. I so know. dumb. Um, so then they're like, where's Dottie? Uh, Dottie's sleeping. And this really long scene where basically he interrogates the stepmother, because he's yeah. like, what do you know about Rex? Because he's pretty much known for quite a while, I would assume, yeah. that uh, Charlotte was, like, knew everything. She was helping Fine. put up uh, yeah. Emil Hirsch to take the fall and stuff, and they were going to get $100,000. And she had mentioned that, like, earlier. She'd be like, oh, we lost $100,000. Yeah, or she says, like, yeah, she says, yeah. like, something about yeah, she the split, the like, the cut. Yeah. 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 And uh, <laughs> he just fucking... Punches her in the face. Yeah, he beats the Real shit out of her. Makes Real hard. And it's just like immediately. And the prosthetics in this movie were pretty hit or miss, I think. There was a couple. When Emil Hirsch first got beaten up, I thought it looked pretty good. But then later no, on. His makeup was, it was bad. I thought, I thought like the very first scene, like right yeah. when he went in, looked fine. Yeah. And then, and then later and then on. Later like, on it got and it might have been the darker lighting of the room that looked. Well, and it almost like, because they're supposed to obviously like be like bruises and stuff. But yeah. then you can like see, like, the lighting on his face and, like, the slight hairs on his face, too, and how mm. it just, just looks like makeup. It's... Yeah. It's bad. Yeah. But when when he punched her in the face, I thought that looked pretty no, decent. That looked pretty um, good. But then, like, <laughs> later on, Matthew McConaughey he starts, like, beating the shit out of him with a can. Yeah. And his face just, like, doesn't no, change. No, it stays the same. And I'm I like, noticed what's going that. On? Like, I was like, ah, looked, and then like, I kept Most looking. of it looked fine, <laughs> but I'm just like, what... Yeah. Is he not actually, like, yeah. is he, like, barely hitting him? Like, what's going on? Because I was, like, afraid, and then like, I kept his, watching, his, his and I was, like, His face should have been, like, caving in, and yeah. I was, like, what's going on? Yeah. Um, yeah. But, like, Emil Hirsch comes in, oh, after uh, Matthew McConaughey makes... Sucks the chicken. Yeah. He makes her, yeah. He, like, sexually assaults Charlo with a piece of chicken. You know what's like, shitty? I was actually... Before the scene happened, I went to KFC last night and I was eating KFC. And this scene happened, I'm like, ah, oh, god damn it. That's so sad. Yeah, I was, luckily I had eaten most of it before that scene ended. Did you, like, reenact the scene? No. <laughs> You're like, yeah, I, I, I didn't have any wings left or <laughs> drumsticks left, but, uh. Yeah, so. also he calls it a wing. 
Oh. Or but now maybe he has a leg. He, I think he, okay, he does. Yeah, which is okay. Suck my leg. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Oh, please. So he's like, and he like it. comes in his pants from it. Yeah. He gets really into it, and then he's like, "All right, you guys are gonna help me, you know, catch your son. Yeah, he's, he's gonna like, try to take Dottie." So hey, Chris is coming here. To try to stop me. They explain everything so slowly. Yeah. It takes so much time. Those fucking southern dialects having to fucking pause in between every word. <laughs> they, they take so much time. So, um, yeah, basically, Chris shows up, they sit down, and then Matthew McConaughey, Killer Joe, and I was like, me and Dottie, we're getting married. It's like, oh, when? Oh, tonight, after this delicious meal. Oh, really? I've got a gun. Oh, no. And then <laughs> Killer Joe's like, ah, I've got a cam. And then <laughs> fucking beats his face in. And Dottie picks up the gun. Yeah. Like, well, like, well, first, like, fucking his dad's holding up. Kill him, Joe! Yeah, a- everybody's, like, on Chris. And they're like, fucking kill him. And Dottie's like, I'm angry! <laughs> and she points a gun yeah, at his she face. She fucking shoots his, her dad first. Yeah, yeah. she shoots the dad shoots first. Both. Straight in, well, like, the should, gut. She's just also, like... Also, I mean, she's probably never shot a gun before. Probably. Great aim. Yeah. And also, like... It's that southern blood. Yeah. I don't know, she might have before she went, because she probably... Got, they treat her like she's, like, 12. Well, that pro- that's probably when that happened, like, that big thing, that traumatic event happened, her mother trying to kill her. I don't think it says when, but if she's, like, living as a 12-year-old, oh, yeah, that's probably no, when. Sure. And I, like, it, I shot a gun before I was 12. Like, that's I don't, terrifying. Yeah, I visit, or maybe I was 12. I visited my grandma. He's like, you want to go shooting? I'm like, sure, grandpa. <laughs> but I, but I, it does I, seem like no one in, in the, the South family has a gun, though, if he has to go buy a gun. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But I don't necessarily think that it's unrealistic for, like, someone to have shot a gun, like, just at a shooting no, range sure. or something, especially, like, young. I don't necessarily. But, but yeah, she shoots, and then... And they, then, like, and then she's, she's like, about to shoot him, and she's like, I'm gonna have a baby. And Matthew McConaughey's like, oh, a baby. And then it ends on an ambiguous ending where you're like... Well, yeah. she's like, she's like, yes. And then she puts her finger, like, right on the trigger, and then it cuts. Yep. And I watched this with Pierre. And he hates when films end like that. And he was like, I hate... He, like, literally just screamed. He was like, ah! <laughs> I like the ending. Uh, I didn't. I didn't like this movie. I did. I didn't love it. I didn't think it was really good or anything, but... I don't know. I like the long scenes. I, I thought... I, I really liked the tension that was built in the two longer scenes. I didn't think the movie was great or anything, but I thought there was some really good tension building. I just wish the other scenes were better because I like the two long scenes. I don't know. What do you? What do you? What do you? What, what do you think? Yeah, I didn't really um, love it. Yeah, and the, especially the second long scene, I just felt like I was ahead of what they were talking about for so long mm-hmm. that. It just kept going and going and going. I was like, okay, I know where we are. And you guys just keep, like, reiterating, like, the fact. And I... So, I didn't really feel, like, as much tension. And even though, like... And then they all sit down. And you obviously know that Chris, like, has a gun. Mm -hmm. And that's just, like, weak tension. It's, like, weak sauce of, like... Yeah, no, I'm... Mostly... I like the scene mostly before Chris mm -hmm. comes into it. For sure. And... I, I like the ending. I wish that, like, the, the can scene, it looked better. Because I'm just like, that yeah. doesn't... He's just hitting all the can and his face isn't changing. Yeah, it just... The whole, like, kind of twisty ending with the parents and Killer Joe wasn't... It, I Yeah, I felt like I kind of was ahead of where it was going a little bit. Yeah. And so it didn't really feel like it was unraveling all that much to me. And then especially with, like... The double thing, it's, like, the same as, like, Double Indemnity and but shit like that. So I also like, really like watching movies about shitty people mm. if they don't ever, like, if they aren't viewed as good. And I thought yeah. this movie was able to capture just, they're all fucking shitty people pretty well yeah. without ever making them seem good. Yeah. Like I said, I didn't love it, but I enjoy it for the most part. What'd you give it, Thomas? Like four. a three? Oh, four. How about you? I'd probably give it like, like a five, maybe a four. Well, what's it? What is? I'll it? say five. Okay, and I'm giving it a six. So five. 
Ooh. Perfect. That's a fun little... Just making the math what? easy. What? If you want to give it a four, you can. No, it's too late. It would just be a 4.6. Oh, okay. I mean... <laughs> it's three numbers. I, mean, I, I couldn't do that. Yeah, it was... So four or five? I, I'm just staying with my... Okay, a five. But... Epic. Epic. Uh, so uh, next week, for from when this uh, when this podcast when the next podcast comes out, it'll be like the fourth of the next month or whatever, fourth of February. Which means we're doing another director deep dive. We already did Bergman. We already did uh, Kurosawa. Kurosawa, and now we're back to Agnes Varda. Boom, 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 boom. So what are we watching, Thomas? Thomas? All right, we're going to watch uh, from Cleo 5 to 7, or Great Cleo movie. from 5 to 7. That's so good. Yeah. I've um, only seen two Varda films, and two they are both on I this list. I haven't seen any, yeah. so. Um, Uncle Yanko, however you pronounce that. I think it's Yanko. Yeah. Vagabond, The Beaches of Agnes, and Faces Places. I like that you put three documentaries on them. Yeah. You want to add, a, so Uncle Yanko's only, I think, like 17 minutes. Is it? Yeah. Oh. So, would you like to... I have another short documentary she did that I would like to add to this list. Okay. Um, it's, uh, she did one called just Black Panthers, and it's about the Black Panthers. Mm-hmm. It's half an yeah. hour. Okay. I'd like to add that one. Sure. Um, if you would like to watch with us, they're all available on either Canopy or Criterion Collection or Criterion Channel. Uh, Canopy is the free streaming service if you have a library card or a student at a college. Uh so I believe it's Beaches of Agnes, Uncle Yonko, and Faces Places are all on Canopy. And then uh, Vagabond and Cleo 5 to 7 are on Criterion, I believe. Let me just make sure. You can't really watch most um, Agnes Party movies on any other like, streaming service aside from Criterion. Yeah. Canopy's Which nice because it has quite a <laughs> bit of her documentaries. Uncle yeah. Yonko's actually on Criterion. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cleo from 5 to 7 is available on both. So, And then the Black Panthers one, I believe, is on Criterion. But let me just make sure so everyone knows where to watch it. I hope so, because I don't have a library card. Oh. Are you going to watch the Canopy ones? Just go get a library I, card. I have. I got DVD. a library I card I, just for I Canopy. I have Canopy because of Chapman. Yeah. It's really nice. There's, like, so much stuff on there. Yeah, you only get... Do you also only get five plays for being a Chapman, or how many plays a month do you get? I think I get as many as I want. Yeah. If you have a library card, you only get, like, five. Oh, really? Yeah. That's interesting. Hmm. Which is fine. I you know, Yeah. Uh, Black Panthers is also on Criterion Channel. Epic. Hannah, thank you so much for being on our epic yeah. podcast. Is there anything you want to say? No, thanks for having me. Wow. And are you going to tell your grandmother about the podcast? Sure. Okay. She would never be able and to And you're out going how to, to tell everyone <laughs> at Chapman University. Yeah. Is Max going to subscribe? Yes. Okay. And you better go home and check if you're subscribed. <laughs> okay. If you're not, <laughs> you better, or I'm going to scream. And remember, go watch DDoS, or it should be out by now. Have fun with the Varda movies. We'll see you all next time. Ugh. Oh, what? You, what do you always say at the end of every episode? Adios. There you go. <laughs>